Hi, welcome everyone to a special edition of Enforcer and the Dude. This is all about parody. We're gonna be asking the hard hitting questions and tearing this debate about parody right apart. Now, we've got some very special guests here today. We've got, in the red corner, <laughs> we've got the heavyweights of Australian motorsport, and I mean by body mass too, by the way. Good on you, mate. <laughs> we've got... We all, we've, got we've got we've got to work, just not go to the gym all day. <laughs> we've got Roland, Dane, Triple Eight Race Engineering, Paul the Dude Morris. Now, in the blue corner, we've got the brains of the debate. We got we. <laughs> DJ Team Penske, uh, Ryan Story, and of course, yours truly as well. So, get ready, we're taking the gloves off. We're getting in the ring. Round one's about to start. Guys, welcome to Enforcer in the Deed. Ryan Story, your first visit. Roland, your second. Uh, thanks. Old hand. <laughs> Old hand. Hey, <laughs> thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. Uh, I mean, it's it's great to have you two guys in here because you're the two guys that have influence on, the, especially the homologation process. And the, and this uh, special episode is about the parody especially about the Mustang, but also about the ZB Commodore when that came on board too. So we really want to get into it. Um, we've spoken about this a lot on the show, uh, especially Paul, we thought we would never say the P word. We said we were finished with it, Yep. but we're back here again. Well, judging from what happened on the weekend, looking at the time sheets, I reckon we mightn't be back again. So, so let's reverse up a bit and see how we got to yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we want to do. Let's yeah. take it right from the beginning, right? So uh, a brief snapshot on the whole Mustang deal. So we've got a we've got a new car that came into town, had to replace the aging Falcon. Uh, happened to be the two-door Mustang, which is the logical choice, or basically the only choice as well, especially with the success of the sales in this country of, of that particular car. Um, tell us how it all sort of came about with trying to get a two-door car, which you haven't seen in decades, back on the grid in supercars or in touring car racing, if you want to roll back the, the time clock as well. Well, it wasn't easy. I mean, a big part of it is getting Ford back to the table. I mean, we all know that Ford left the, left the sport and weren't as engaged as what Holden have been over many years. So to get them to the table first and foremost was, was a hell of an achievement, and that wouldn't have happened without Roger Penske. So from there, we've got a control space frame chassis with supercars, which we've had since the beginning of the Car of the Future era in 2013. And we've basically had to adapt a two-car a two-car body to uh, to effectively a chassis that was designed for a, for a four-door four, four door body, mm. and it was a new process for us. We we'd only recently become the homologation team for Ford. Um, it, it was our first homologation. The ZB was interestingly enough Triple Eight's first homologation as, as the official homologating team for Holden, despite mm. the fact they'd been involved in in many many of those processes over the years with Walkinshaw. But for us, it was the first first time around. So. You start off with understanding what the benchmarks are. What's, what's the target? And for us, the target was the ZB. Triple Eight and GM had done an amazing job in homologating that car. It had moved, moved the goalposts a bit for us without, without question. And the ZB as a road car has one of the lowest drag coefficients of any car on the road. So as a race car, it also has low drag. So we had to make a lot of decisions around the design of the car to basically make it fit the control chassis and also ensure that we met the downforce and the drag numbers that are fundamental to our, to our sport. So we started off a process very, very early on in 2018 once we'd confirmed that we were, we were at a go point with this program in working with supercars, meeting with, we, meeting with them every fortnight, getting parts approved as we went along before we hit the go button on manufacturing to try and ensure that the process was as transparent as possible and that we could roll up to the VCAT at the end of the year, which happened to be at Tamora, with a series of tools. So we had a really good operating window in which we could get our cars to balance out and match where the ZB was. How involved, Roland, because I'm, I'm really interested in this, and I'm sure all of our 
our fans are as well, and the fans of the category. How involved were you behind the scenes in knowing what was going on with the homologation process of this car? Because I'm sure you're interested to know what technically what was happening. Did you know everything across the board that was going on? But to be honest, we didn't know anything. And that's where the system fell down. There have been times in the past where we've been doing cars in parallel, right? So oh, yeah. Car yeah. of the Future, for yeah. instance, um, <coughs> whilst the, the FG Falcon <coughs> was not really changed, there was, uh, whereas there were de detailed changes to the VE turning into the VF and everything, there was quite a lot of, of visibility about what was going on. Um, <coughs> when it came to the, to the Mustang, which was a fundamental change, you know, going to two doors and everything, etc. Which I'd been saying, I'm, I said it four years before, you know, why why not go to the Mustang when I first heard, heard it would be a, a global car. Um, when <coughs> uh, Alan Mullally was running Ford, he was the one who said, let's go to a one Ford policy, make right-hand drive cars and everything, etc. And uh, to me, it stuck out that you know the future of the category <coughs> with Ford the Falcon was dying, we needed to have the Mustang in. But there wasn't, um, there wasn't any visibility, to be honest, about what was going on. If there had been, and uh, I would have honestly put my hand up and said, hang on, if we're going to accommodate this and accommodate the, the full um, facsimile of the, of the road car, um, we need to change the upper hoop of the cage. Yep. We need to allow for it in central gravity. Um, and we then the other tweak that would have been necessary is to all of us widen the track of the cars a little bit because the Mustang is a is a wider car. So it wouldn't have been very much and it would have been achievable relatively simply. But if somebody had come to me and said, guys, the best way we can preserve the DNA, and this is for getting parity for a minute and aero balance and all the rest of it, this is just the, the, the overall look and feel of the category and the cars, is if somebody had come and said, guys, we need to do this and this to try and incorporate uh, the changes that we need, and the Mustang might not be the only car coming, you know, it could, there could be others coming, um, then I personally would have put my hand up for it straight away. I can't, I can't speak for other people, but I would have said, if, if we can accommodate that and be smart about central gravity um, <clears throat> and, uh, and then the, the aero balance, um, I would have put my hand up for it. So there was, a, there was a breakdown in communication there. And I think one thing that has come out of all the toing and froing is that uh, we, some of us, realize, I think Ryan would agree with this, that we fight in front of the garages. Behind the garage, we have to work together. And, and if I go back a decade, we did. We have to work to be, together properly as a unified force to preserve the category long term. And if we don't do that and, and be more open about what we're doing and what the plans are and everything, etc., cetera, um, if we don't do that, then we don't deserve to, to live. So in answer to your question, we didn't really know. Right. And, so what's, we, and what's your what's your view on the whole thing, Paul? Like you, you know the process as well as anyone. I mean, how it got handled all the way through. Uh, so from the very beginning, what did you think? Did you? Oh, oh, for me, it's pretty simple. They've been allowed to have some freedoms to allow the body to to fit on that chassis, and then they've gone, oh ripper, let's go. So if you take the Mustang and take the headlight or the door handle or the door. You can't write a list of any parts from the road car that fit on the race car, but the ZV you still can. There's parts, so but Ryan did his job right. He, he manipulated the rules to make, make a really incredible race car, so mm -hmm. good job. But yeah, it's, it's just something that we've never seen before. We've so, gone away from the DNA of the car. So before we took over as homologating team for Ford, yep. when Tickford was the homologating team, they applied to, to lower the roll hoop to try and make the, make the he, chassis he more accommoda it, accommodating. Oh, listen, I don't want to... <laughs> I wasn't even there. Right. I've never sat on yeah. the commission. Well, going no. on so, that, it so sounds that, like he wouldn't have. You know, I, well, so, I've never yeah, sat on the yeah, commission. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. never yeah. been asked. So yeah. there, there had been some steps to try and address that and mitigate that, and they were re rebuked and rebuffed. Yeah. So we basically had, we were basically told, okay, this is, you've got to play within. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to play well, within the rules of everyone else. Headlights, bonnet, boot. 
Well, the, the <laughs> car, I can tell you the parts that are, that are carryover, the, the, the side mirrors, yep. the door handles, yep. and the tail lights. Now, we've, we've ended up making a, t- a carbon bucket tail, tail light, light because yeah, it's yeah, cheaper yeah. than the OEM tail light, yeah. but, but you, could, you can take the tail light Those off your road car and, and it will fit which, in the race which, car. Which is what you hit on before, that it's no good for the DNA of the sport, for, for where, yeah, we, yeah, where yeah. we come from. Exactly, yeah. and 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 we always we used to always sit there and say, look, we need to maintain the um, the facsimile of the car, except for having a sexy looking front spoiler, yep. you know, splitter, whatever, um, and having a rear wing on it that looks looks good, etc. And apart from that, we need to keep it. Hmm. In my view, we should have kept it. Now, if that meant making some compromises or having to to change the way we went about it, uh, then that's what we should have done. Yep. But but you to, in order to bring everyone on that journey, you know, as all the other teams involved who weren't going down the Mustang route, you had to be transparent with them, tell them what was going on, and then say these are the reasons why. And if we don't do it, this is what it'll look like. If we do do it, this is what it'll look like. And if you present it properly and you're transparent about mm-hmm. it, then I believe that you would have got a, a great outcome. Okay, so that's so that's so we've already identified. In the first 10 minutes, the first fault. The first fault is you should have been able to modify the chassis to fit that body. We're in agreement with that? Correct. The Mustang body. Yep. And yep. then we probably wouldn't have half the situations, would you agree with that, that's gone on with uh, the parity between the two, the adjustments that's been made in between. Would it have been a lot closer out of the gate if they stuck more to the original form? I think that we would have had more focus on the centre of gravity thing, right. which we should have had last year anyway. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay? Agreed. So we should have had it last year. And, to, and, um, and Penske did everything they could to negate it very effectively, the CFG last year, and don't blame that. Let's go in racing. Okay, so mm-hmm. but uh, kept the Falcon competitive. Correct. But yeah, other, yeah, but yeah. other teams, <laughs> and we saw, and we saw other teams doing... couldn't afford that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's what they did. And I've got no argument with that because it was it was allowed, and the CFG of the uh, ZB, um, without being able to exactly quantify it, because there's no FGs yeah. now, mm-hmm. uh, it was certainly better. But you've got to remember that when we were developing that car, we went to supercars and said, these are the parts that, for one reason or another, we need to make in composite. Yep. Um, the car's physically smaller yep. as well than the old car, so that was going to have an effect. Um, and if I take the biggest example, the roof, for instance, I can show you a dozen emails to the then technical director of supercars saying, how much do you want this to weigh? Again and again and again. And he went to the commission as well and said to the Ford teams, do you want to run a carbon roof on the Falcon? And the Ford team representative, homologation team at the time said no. So they were given yeah, the option of running it. They didn't it. write to everyone and say, I'm going to have a COG advantage. No, because no. they didn't think about it properly. <laughs> no, right? but, yeah. no, but but he's not. But you would now. But he's not obliged to. Is no, it? he's yeah. not obliged to. No different. No different to where we well, were. We, we, but we tried to point. It, we tried to point yeah. it out with the roof. Well, yeah. you said what? What a do you com- want? A competent person in that role would have picked that up. Uh, do you want it to weigh ten kilos, nine kilos, eight kilos, seven kilos? In the end, mm-hmm. oh, we don't care what you do. So the so this I is to the commission. Yep. Sorry? This is to the commission. No, this oh, is to, to the technical, technical department. Technical technical department. Okay. So um, the, the end result was that last year, the and it varies from team to team, right? Mm-hmm. This is, is not just a model thing. There's team to team uh, issues here as well. But the overall CFG possibilities with the ZB were undoubtedly uh, better than the outgoing car mm-hmm. and, uh, and the Falcon. Um, Penske, in my view, did a very good job of maximising what they could do to yep. lower the CFG of their race car, not the Falcon, their race car. Yep. Um, it, they did it very effectively, uh, and that's what a race team should do. It's not their job to sort out what's right and wrong in where that CFG is. So then going into this year, if we had had a reset of the roll cage, for instance, it would have focused everyone on CFG. On CFG, yeah. But because it Instead didn't... fixing it on the hop. Because they didn't... Exactly. Now, we yeah. were brazing it. And believe me, we were asking what's happening about CFG. Mm. And we were told, oh, there's nothing to worry about. 
right? Well, clearly there was something. I, I was told the exact same thing 12 months ago, and <laughs> and it's something that, that that you're an expert at. I'm I'm I'm, I'm the apprentice, so to speak. Huh, so, sometimes you need. To, so, <laughs> geez, exactly. He's done your apprenticeship pretty fast. Sometimes <laughs> you need to. Sometimes you need to maximise uh, maximise the, the media opportunity to to embolden people to make decisions. And at Adelaide last year, the ZB came out, and and we knew we had a COG issue. So yeah. we played the media to try and get a good outcome, which would allow us to have a composite bonnet, composite roof, and ultimately a composite uh, rear boot. Well, you so have we, to. We, we had, teams we had have to, got to be treated fairly, so. Yeah. Well, but you, you have to be, you have to, you have to have that racing mentality of, okay, how, you, you see the problem, okay, how, what's, what's the path of least resistance yeah. to get this done? And, right. and, and I got a couple of death threats out of it too, my right. lad. But, well, <laughs> I've probably got a load more, <laughs> How many you reckon is lining up for him? <laughs> No problem. <laughs> but but it was, it was, it's, it's interesting that some of the things that Roland talks about, we had 12 months earlier with the ZB, just at different extremes, yeah. I suppose. But Paul, I mean, when the ZB came out, when you first saw it, what was your thoughts? Because everyone's paying out, well, when I say everyone, some of the pundits are saying, oh, the thing's a, a sports sedan. But when you first, I know my first impressions when I saw well, the I, ZB. Well, I actually saw it up in Roland's factory when it was getting built and saw yeah. some of the composite parts being made because... You told me you couldn't get them from Germany or whatever, and I'm like, oh, okay, mate, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, well, here we go, you know, and um, that's what started it off. So, yeah, yeah uh, uh, look, the the biggest the biggest thing with the ZB <laughs> was a smaller car. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You got to understand it's a smaller car, which is what you were getting to with the drag. It was also a different construction with mm. a, a tailgate. I mean, if we'd run the production tailgate, there would have been two outcomes from that. Mm -hmm. One, nobody would have been able to afford to repair the car. Yeah. Okay. This way, if you talk to the Holden teams, it's actually been massively cost effective. Yep. The other thing is that the not only does the production item weigh an absolute ton, where well, we wouldn't have been able to get down to the weight limit, but then the reinforcement that you need on the roof, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a rolling safety. problem, yeah, right? Flew off into the yeah. crowd or Clearly. something. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but seriously, it had to be, um, uh, there were some things that needed to be thought of differently from how we'd thought of it in the past. Yeah. So it was, and we had to do, do our job and the supply issue, we always knew was going to be a, a difficult thing because of just going from a a place literally where you went down to Port Elizabeth as you well know at, Adel at Adelaide and you took the panels that hadn't passed the QC test yeah. Yeah. and whatever to suddenly having to import them and then literally in the middle of building our first car the uh, Opal got sold from General Motors mm -hmm. to, to Peugeot yep. so we were dealing with a different different set of people who were as helpful as they could be by the way but when some things aren't listed as spare parts, they weren't they available to yeah. us. So it's yeah. a, we had some different issues to work with. Um, yeah, I suspect right. the only spares are going to have is crash. Correct. Crash yeah. Yeah. Normal yeah. crash repairs. Yeah. 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 And, if, and, and some of the stuff, if you start needing it, the car's written off you know, yeah. It's a, yeah. as a road car. Yeah. Yeah. But we, yeah. we learned really quickly last year, just with a composite bonnet, you have a prang in one of those things, you can repair it. Oh, or it bounces back. It bounces back, exactly yeah, right. It, right. Yeah, yeah the, exactly. the old bonnet on the on the VF used to crease in a heartbeat. Yeah, look, mm -hmm. this place is little with it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. So, 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 so cost-wise, cost-efficient for the team, it was better with the well, composite Well, parts. our merch oh. department loses a bit of money because we don't have as many, <laughs> bit, <laughs> as many bits to Memorabilia, sell. Yeah. But, right. uh, but in, terms, in, in terms of repairability and, and, and consistency mm -hmm. and less bog, man, you're yeah. well now, ahead. You know this from, the, from even back in your day when we went from the steel guard on the front to the composite guard mm -hmm. you used to snag them every first corner yeah. and, he, yeah. and back in the day when you is that him specifically <laughs> when he was in enforcing particular. stuff <laughs> yes, yeah. and and he but then you'd get it um, on the tire yeah and more often they than cut, not yeah, guard, not yeah. only would you yeah. have screwed a guard up which had been carefully fabricated to be slightly Probably wider and all the rest of it. Man hours into it yep but you'd also ruined your race mm. yeah but today how often does that happen very very rarely right. Yeah. Right. 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 Now let's start digging. Right. Question to all three of you. Right. Because this is a debate. Right. Oh, okay. So the deal is, and no one likes throwing rubbish in their own backyard. But this is what this isn't about. This is about identifying issues. People sticking their hand up and saying, right, we got we got an issue. The homologation process. How flawed is it? A lot of silence, boys. <laughs> A lot of silence. I, I think it can be better. And I think some of the steps... Well, how is it to manipulate? Is what you're asking. 
Yeah. So I think that, well, I, that all rolls into the same. I know. Like, like the CF, CFD. This is everyone's know. chance here to clear this up. Like, if you got to, you got to stick your hand up before you can fix a problem. First, you got to identify it. You always say that. One hundred percent, I always say it, Russell. And the, um, I think I said it back to you in nineteen ninety-eight when you put the car on the wall at Bathurst. Yep. But the and, and every year since. Glad to see you got over it. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> but the, um, the, the real issue that we had. Uh, mm. Honestly, was we didn't have a good enough technical department of supercars, right? Yeah, and and if uh, and therefore they didn't have proper control over it. The people we've got there now, we've raised the bar. We've got um, some people who are um, far far better understanding of what needs to needs to be done. Far better at keeping an eye on us. I mean, you don't have to actually look very far this year to see the the level of improvement in scrutineering. Oh man, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. and they've they've managed to do it mostly without actually interfering too much with our our workload because scrutineering done incorrectly mm. can actually be a real hassle for the mechanics mm. and the engineers on the ground. Mm. So they've done a far better job of going, hey, do something about okay. this, yeah. or picking the moment when they're going to take your car apart or whatever. Um, to to get the timing right so that people aren't there all night mm. and this sort of thing, um, and that's because they're racing people, yeah. right? Agree and with they, that, they, Paul? They, uh, well, uh, yeah, 100%. am I right? Yeah, you've got some good people in there, and, and they're more resourced too. And they need to still be better resourced. Yeah. And I think Ron and I will both would go, both agree with that. But but even even in the le in the lead up to Bathurst, the technical department mm -hmm. are going to come to they're going to go to Banyo, they're going to go to Stapleton, they're going to do some some scrutineering checks, and they're going to they're going to have a look at the car, seal some things up before we load them into the truck, so it saves it getting done at mm -hmm. Bathurst. I mean these these are, these are steps in the right direction. So as far as the homologation Fair process, you've already, so you said there was a flaw in the technical department, or, or the technical department hasn't done as good a job as they could. Does that mean both of you, and, and as being homologating teams, taking advantage of that situation when you're homologating your cars, or, or, or pushed it to the extremes? Well, our job. Yes. We're racist. Oh, sorry, our job is to win races. We're racist. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hang on, have you forgotten where you came from? No, <laughs> not at all. So, I, I would in a flash. Yeah, well, you'd take it too far. I would. <laughs> but I'd go to the fine stage and then back it off a little bit. <laughs> As you oh, often do. Yeah. Um, it's our job to do that, Russell. But, yeah. uh, but it's also Supercar's job to, to try and maintain um, you know, a sense of decorum about that and keep it all on a, on a level playing field. Uh, I think we're better equipped to do that now. And to be honest, if we look too far back, we're only going to get a sore neck, yeah. as, yep. as Dick would say. Okay. So we've actually got to look at how we're going to do it in future. Mm -hmm. um, we've, or, and I'm sure we'll come to that, but we have, but we have been already talking about how we do that. Yeah. And we should have a collaborative approach to it. You would be amazed at, because um, I'm amazed sometimes, by the discussions that we've had, that we have not only us, but also the engineers, who all know each other, yep. have had about, well, what's the approach to do this better next time? Yeah. You know, it's a, a, how are we going to, because at the end of the day, they all want to stay and work. They all realise yep. that they've got to, uh, to have a category to carry on earning a living mm -hmm. if they want to stay here yeah, uh, in Australia. That's true. And somewhere, when you, when you get all of them on the, on the right day at the right time, they understand that. Yeah, because, I mean, when the Mustang rolled out, I mean, when, when I first saw pictures, I'm sure you're the, you're the same, dude. Like, when you first saw it, it went, whoa, that's pretty rad. Like, let's face it, you've got to be honest about it. When you looked at it and you saw the rear wing and all the rest of it went with it, you Energy went, rear guards. whoa, someone's done their homework here pretty well. And, and that's what they do. And, and that's, what, that's what we do. And we had four performance backing us all the way. Yep. And, and one, of the, one of the jokes at the time was, that's not a Mustang. I said, well, listen, if Ford are prepared to put a pony badge on the front of it, it's a Mustang. Yep. And in Ford performance, we're very fortunate. And we've got a partner who've developed the GT car. In fact, Todd Willing, who was the head of the Ford Asia Pacific Design Studio, who we worked with through the development of the Mustang, actually designed the Ford GT. So they're responsible for the GT, the Mustang mm. GT4 car, the cars that you're seeing race now in NASCAR. So we, we, we couldn't have had a better partner to work with. And we were, we, were, we were really lucky to have the OEM that engaged in what, what it was that we're doing. So when you got the first clipping of the wings, were you surprised? No. You knew it was coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, the, first, the first clip actually happened at Tamora. 
Yeah. Sean, Sean Seymour rang me. Yeah. He, he was at he was at Tamora and he rang me and he said, "We need to reduce the size of your end plates." Yeah. I said, "All right, I'll I'll, I'll get back so to you." So the second one, you're like, "Right, that's it." We 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 saw it coming, and yeah. and there was a a collaborative process in terms of where those changes would go, what the loss would be, how that would then how that would then roll out, and then trying to ensure that we got it to a point where we weren't basically burning our bread bread and butter. I mean, we live and die by the by the support mm -hmm. of, of our fans and, and those who watch this show and, and, and are engaged in the sport. So it was, a, it was a challenging thing because it was a difficult narrative to sell from our point of view, yep. but, it w but it was clear why we needed to go <laughs> down that path. <laughs> and then uh, I suppose we'll get to where we are. But the, on the weekend, it looked from me, I was sitting at home watching the timing screen, watching, the, watching it on my iPad and it looked good to see Mustang holding, holding, Mustang, Mustang, I, I thought it was... I mean, the Nissan there somewhere, but it, it looked like, hey, we might have got this right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a hard call, but, you know, we've got what we've got for the rest of the year. Let's get on Is with it. Is there any more coming, or do you reckon we're done? There shouldn't be, in my opinion, which, whatever happens, there shouldn't be. We've so got you're, we've... you're happy with the way it is now? Well, I'm, I'm content with what it is now, because they've made a real effort. Yep. Right? Supercars yep. have made a real effort to try and do something. And uh, so... Yeah, they've recognised there's an imbalance and they've mm -hmm. done something about it. So it is what it is well, just, for the rest of the year. When you say recognised, what are they using to determine that? Well, they've got more data than any of us. Yeah, so they've got, the, mm. they've got, well, no, they've got corner speed data. They know what this is camber, what the, this ride height. This is what the fans heights. need to understand. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. they've got all, yeah. they not only have the, the telemetry. Yeah. This is it, not you just on the phone whinging. Oh, there's, there's, there's that as well. well. There's, there's that as well. No, that's, that's this, right. is, this is supercars going, oh, these are the facts. Okay, right. -o. Clearly, as Ryan says, you've got to push your own boat. Yeah. Because uh, right? for me, it's but pretty obvious. At tail and bend, I can sit there and watch the cars go around, and I know a fair bit about what's going on, and go, that guy never lifted through that corner, and the guy yeah. in the hold needs. There's so, something wrong. There. So they have supercars. Don't forget, supercars get the telemetry from every car before we do. Yeah. Yeah. It actually streams live mm -hmm. to their setup. And then yeah. a second later pops out on our yep. laptops, yeah, yeah. as it were. But you've got people there now that can interpret it too. Correct. Yeah. And so they're looking at it. They're looking at, they've got CFD models of all our cars. Yep. They, but they can look at, um, and they do measure ride heights, your ride mm -hmm. height, my ride height. They measure the, uh, the cambers that we're running. They've got a pretty good awareness of what spring weights will be running, etc. Mm -hmm. They've got far more of that. Than they than certainly they had in the last couple of years, so they've taken that, they've recognised that there's an issue, they're obliged under the terms of the racing entitlements contract to do something if they. This is another if, thing that people need to understand. It, no, it doesn't no. matter what I say or what Ryan says; yes. they've actually got an, a legal obligation to yeah. do something. Which, if you go back long enough, how this category started, mm -hmm. we had four-wheel drive Nissans winning everything, yep. and they they. Hey, let's design a category where the cars are even. Correct. That's, that's so, the foundation well, of the whole it, thing. It, it's in the, well, there's a technical parity section, yeah. isn't yeah. there, in the operations manual. Yeah. Well, there's a, so, what's more important, Russ, is that there's a, a parity statement in the racing entitlements contract. And yeah. that's the, the contract that ties yeah. us all together. Mm. Okay? Yes. And the foundations of that and uh, of that statement go right back to your old boss, Larry's. Mm rules from 1993 yep. yeah, of, of how you should be able to go racing with these cars in Australia. And it's an extension of that. Well, that's what, well, that's what this is here. So just, yep. to, just to quote 1.4.4, uh, the category is not about equalisation of the abilities of p participating drivers and or teams. It is up to the individual drivers and teams to compete to their very best abilities under the principle of the technical parity, which means they're not penalising drivers or teams for a good performance. Yeah, we're not TCR. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. No. It's technical parity, not sporting right. parity. Right. So, to, the, ex the, to, to the extent that is possible, supercars will use uh, to its best endeavours to ensure a level playing field for all competing makes and models of car, uh, specifically in the following performance areas, aerodynamic downforce, balance, drag, engine power, fuel consumption, etc., etc. So, so, so that's an actual rule. Because when, when a lot of the fans say, hey, you know, there's... Oh, we're blowing up about another parity adjustment that's actually in the rules. That, that so if we go back to the commission meeting prior to Phillip Island, 
and it's under A1.4.6, yep. the Supercars Commission, upon the recommendation of the Head of Motorsport, which is Adrian Burgess, yep. may at their discretion order at any time, yep. I almost know this word for word anyway. Yeah, yeah I reckon you do, yep. Yep, but I'll, I'll get it out for may you. At, at, yep. at any time, um, you, it's actually miss, is it missing a little bit? No, yeah. uh, yeah. during a season, that, uh, order at any time during a season that a parity review be undertaken between all makes and models right. of cars. Okay. So that actually occurred at the at the commission meeting prior to Phillip Island. Island yeah. So we got to Phillip Island, we then had the discussion. It was either a choice of working with the head of motorsport for them to then evaluate changes to us being the new, the new car, because technically within the rules, the new car needs to be brought to the incumbents. So we basically had a discussion at that point where we could be involved and engaged in that process rather than the head of motorsport going to the commission saying, these are the changes we're going to make to the Mustang. So, so I, I, I did what I'm supposed to do as the Ford homologating team and, and as a racer for that matter as well. Mm. I basically went through that process and said, this is, this, these, this is what we propose. Adrian nice. then went and yeah. did his analysis. Well, yeah. Some control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's a degree of control, but Put, it's then pull off kit number three on the shelf that you thought it might have had to run. <laughs> 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 what about went, this? I just but but went, went through one. a process. Here's what I prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we came up with those changes very quickly. I can't necessarily go through the process in which that, in which was undertaken to get there. But, yeah. but they then they then tested that with their CFD tools and the models that they have of the cars, yep. which have been right. developed over time with their with They're their still developing. Are there more information? They are, yeah, yes. yeah. Now, now what, why did now why did they give the Commodore a leg up and not um, take some away? From from the Mustang. Was Roland what, what, tied for it? Why no, was it? No, I didn't. Oh, well, um, according to every fan, Roland, no, you, you're controlling I mean, I, all this, according, but you don't. I, should, uh, you're not, I, you, I wish I did. <laughs> I know, but you're not on the commission, you're not on the board, you haven't got a hotline to Adrian Burgess no. or mm. Campbell Little. No, I, um, other than those people having worked for me, yeah. Yeah. I certainly don't pay them anymore. Yeah. And uh, the they both technically worked for so us as well. But <laughs> <laughs> look, the the reality is that they recognise the problem, right. and we had been talking about it collaboratively, as you, as, as mm. you said, we've been talking about it for some time, and the the what we're all trying to do is not spend a lot of money right now. Okay, we're all trying to make sure we don't spend a lot of money, and somewhere. The the additions to the to the Commodore uh, were I don't know a couple of hundred dollars if that yep. to do. Right. Um, whereas to have, for instance, modified the Mustang to the extent it would need to would have cost a lot more money. Yeah. So it made right. sense from a category point of view. You've also got to understand. So you agree? It's, you you were quite happy to do that rather than you see see the. Mustn't get clipped. It, it, it's being pragmatic. Yeah, it's yeah. pure pragmatism. Because it, it's it, cooler. Cause it, it's cooler. It, the rumours are is that when I say rumours, that all these things go back. And again, this is coming back from fans who that's your market. Is that is that um, like Ford or Roger Penske or someone's going? You will not mess around with our car anymore. That's why the holding got a leg up. Well, it's cooler heads prevailing, and it's no different to what we saw last year with the ZB. We we basically we basically made composite panels to, to try and mm. mitigate what, what we deemed to be a, an advantage that the ZB had over the Falcon. And the Falcon was an old car at that point. It had evolved from the FG through to the FGX, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we, we made those changes mm. accordingly. So I think it was a case of cooler heads prevailing and, and, and defaulting to a pragmatic approach. And these things work at the direction of the technical de mm. department. We rely on them with the, da the data that they have access to that Roland alluded to before, the CFD modelling that mm -hmm. they've put together. We have to put our trust and faith in them in, t in saying this, this, this mousetrap isn't this quite the same as this mousetrap. So mouse they totally this instigated it. it, the technical department totally instigated it. No, I didn't changes. say that. I said that we'd been talking with them <laughs> collaboratively. Because, yeah. of course, oh, okay. we're not going to sit there yeah. and, and just say, oh, well, we don't want to go any faster relative to the Fords all year. Yeah. But, but Ryan knows, no, Ryan but knows, knows what's yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't read it in Speed Cafe that you've got to upgrade your car. No. He knows what's happening before he gets a bulletin from the technical department. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. He's a, on a the, day before. Yeah. He's on the <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. No, but that, that one there I only learned a day before. So my only criticism of the most recent change yeah. is that with the prior changes, and, and this is something that, that Roland and I have talked about, and it's not a criticism of Roland at all, but with the prior changes to the Ultima and to the Commodore, there was more... There was more consultation and, and certainly communication with, with the commission. 
Oh, the commission. And, and with the other homologating teams, which two of which happened to be on the commission. Oh, this but, one was right. So, okay, so, okay, so okay. Roland, with the first Commodore change. Well, that just proves the commission shit. Well, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I they just I, bypassed it because it <laughs> doing nothing. So we we got we got to. We, we had, Roland came and prosecuted a case quite effectively about changing the angle of the under tray extension to the Commodore earlier this year. Yep. He basically came with some, with some data, presented the case and said, we need to make this change. I didn't, I didn't have a vote. I'm an alternate member of the commission, but I supported, I supported that change. And, and basically oh, yeah, we had an sure. agreement at that point in time that, that, that Todd could go away and the Nissan could go away and effectively do the same thing have a supervised test on track, supervised by supercars, yep. where there's effectively data that, 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 that's basically driven by some let's CFD get analysis, it. It does. get some track data as well, and, let's and that's get, a good let's process. Let's get some information before we make... My yeah, only yeah. criticism of the yeah. recent ZB change is that, that that same process and the same steps that took place with those previous changes didn't happen. Yeah, now but that's, but that, the result's yeah. good. I think we've got a small sample size right now. But certainly, certainly we saw the Commodores take a step up. If you're up. a fan on the weekend, you watched it on the weekend, that was pretty cool. The cars were close, different teams were up there, there wasn't a big gap. But to me, that was like, okay, that's back to what supercar racing should Look, be. It, to be perfectly honest, in our opinion, if we'd gone to Pukekohe without any changes, you yeah. would have had one, two, three, four, five, six Fords, uh, even if they hadn't used top gear. That's got to be good gear. for the sport, isn't it? So it's a, I reckon it's positive. Mm. Yeah. I think mm. the... Um, the the no, issue the is you, no one can pass anyone now because you've all got too much downforce. Well, that's what? another. That's, 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 that's another. <laughs> hold that thought, Paul. We're getting that's, to that one. That's, hold, that's hold another. That's that another. Yeah, another issue. Got Nissan Altima syndrome. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> a, that's another issue. But in the in the meantime, I see. Okay, we've got we've got. Yep. Uh, let's mm. crack on with it. Let's not talk about parity anymore because yep. it. To be honest, it bores the pants off everyone. Yep. I believe it, that it's a shocker. Well, you've got one percent of the fans make 95% of the noise, right? And that's the same whether you're talking about politics yeah, or yeah, football yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Except but the people all, that watch this show. Though. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, <laughs> but <Natural. laughs> all, all talking about this thing which the average person mm. switches onto the TV and wants to watch a motor yeah. race. Yeah. And mm. I, had a, I had a call from an old friend in England uh, last night who said... You say that every time you're on the show. You must have a lot of old friends. <laughs> I have. <laughs> as, you, as you know, I have got plenty of them old. But... But he called me and said, um, you guys always, always going on about your parity there, etc. It's, it's almost boring. And I said, yeah, well, it is for us as well. He said, have you watched BTCC? Because I always bagging them about BTCC. Have you watched Knock Hill, Scotland, from yeah. the weekend? And um, I said, no. So I watched three one and a half minute clips of three races, mm. etc. Jeez, it was all going on. No aero on the cars to talk of, yep. and it was there was this mass of cars gaggle, you know, fight, and fighting hard, racing hard, etc. Mm. Um, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, maybe I shouldn't be uh, giving them such a hard time yeah. uh, about maybe we need to look at ourselves, shut up about parity, start getting our own house in order about aero generally, yep. yeah. moving forward. Yep. And come up with a with a better product. Well, let, let me let me. What about the TCR car rush? Do you get aero wash off those things? They've got no. big wings on them. No, well, bugger, bugger all. To be really? honest, it's a, considering they're front wheel drive, and them. you reckon you will blow the fronts off of them, yeah. they're actually not not too bad. Okay. The, the last you know? comment that I'll just make, just to follow on yeah, from yeah, what yeah, Roland yeah. said. Sorry, um, yeah. I think where we've we've kicked an own goal this year, in that we have state-owned media. Enforce from the dudes an, an independent outlet, but we but we control our television, we control the supercars yep. website, Correct. we control a lot of the me messaging, yep. and we haven't done a good enough uh, job well, of they explaining did. these changes. They did it, on the weekend. The piece that Larco did with the changes was great. Oh, uh, was it? Yep. Okay. It was like if I'm yep. sitting there. I understand it. I know what you've done. Great. Right. Yep. Not why you've done it, mm. but. Yeah, but the technical but, part of but it. the problem is, is that when these things are announced before Larco gets the chance to get the whiteboard out, we need yep. to be doing it then. Yeah, yeah. And and Larco does a bloody good job in the telecast. He does a great job yep. in explaining those technical things in in not just in layman's terms, but so the casual fan can can understand what the hell is going on, and a bloke who's been point. watching it for twenty years can understand what's yep. going on. But it needs to happen before we get to yep. that, it's because in the meantime, that, 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 in the meantime, the guys on social media are going nuts. And that's why yeah. we're doing this, because like I said, we we. 
first few episodes we did this show, we spoke about parody. That's when everything was just starting, first few rounds, and the Mustang dominated, and it was like, and we swore we'd never talk about it again because it was just boring to death. We're going, seriously, like, if that's, yeah, if you can't much. handle your own, your own media, this is supercars, do it yourself, we're not doing it for you. Mm. But then we've got, inv that's why we got involved here because it's been so many comments and we've been bombarded about all this. And if you look at, the poll that Speed Cafe has recently done. It's their second biggest poll since the inception of Speed Jeez. Cafe. You know, almost 10,000 votes for that the whole parody debate has ruined the image of supercars in those fans' eyes, right? So it's a reasonable percentage when you take, I mean, you know polls, hardly everyone gets involved, but to get almost like 15,000 in total, right? And ninety percent of it, eighty-five percent, it says that it's damaged the look of supercars because of the way it's been handled and put across. Yeah, the, you know, the, uh, Russ, I it's mean, partly because it's partly because we've had this huge long period without discussing it. When I first came 16 years ago to Australia, everyone used to be tapping out the numbers on a Monday morning to yeah. see if there should Looking be a parity adjustment. Yeah. Crunching the and numbers. it's a, plenty of other categories in the world mm. have parity adjustments, right? Whether it's TCR yeah. or GT or whatever. And so, um, you know, they do in, um, in the United States use it, et cetera, in road racing. So it's a, mm. uh, here we are, we've, we've got our knickers in a twist about mm. something which should the, at the end of the day, the category is mm. trying to do the right thing. So we've got, we've, we haven't done a good job of actually having parity over the last year or two, that, as good a job as we should have done. Right. Let's try and make sure we do a better job over this off season coming up. Mm. And, uh, and if we need to make adjustments in future, just front up and do it. Have some balls. Mm -hmm. Just say, this is our structure for doing it. And this is how we're doing it because at the end of the day, we want good racing. Mm. I think the shame of it, out of all of this, is that you can't get away from the fact that Scotty McLaughlin is doing a very good job this year. He's doing a great job, but some of that is devalued by this discussion, right? Agreed. And yep. it's been the other way around in the past as well. Yep. It's, it, it's, it's that when you've got a team and a driver that's doing a great job, yeah? They, then that should that should be able to be recognised in its own right. Yeah, but but we're, right. we've got That's too much. Point. There's too much dirt around everything at the right, moment. Right. Let's stop no. talking about parody then. Yep. Right. Cool. Right. Move on. So, so. The one. The no, one no, last. No, I'll no. just say one last point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one last one. He's saying Scotty Bianco is doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. He is. But the, <laughs> the thing I'll say about Roland is that is that between Roland, myself, and a couple of others yeah. in pit lane, we can have this sensible and reasonable discussion in a closed room. Yep. Speak pragmatically, openly, talk about the problems, mm. identify them, look for solutions, come up with solutions, then leave the room without any blood being on the walls. Couldn't agree more. And, and I think, and that should be very red, and that's why this conversation has taken place. These two are, are actually want to benefit the sport. They've actually got the sport at heart. Yes, right. they're fierce competitors. The sport. Yeah, well, for sure. I mean, but, you know, they're directly involved and... They, they want what's best for the sport. They want competition, not only from themselves, with everyone as well. So we want to it beat has to be each right other. Because, because there's this we don't want to beat, we, beat. We don't want to beat no, each no. other. That's, that's the thing. You've got to have somebody to beat. Of course you can. And yeah, unless yeah, you have right. a good sport, yeah. unless you've got a good category, there'll be nobody there yeah. to beat. Yeah. Okay. Right yeah. That's done. And great sure. explanation. Appreciate it. No, that's great. <laughs> but let's look forward, because again, we've, we've talked about, you know, the problems, uh, identified them, right, the solutions going forward. So. So this part, I just want to go over radio forecasting because you can't just let it stop here because yes, you've got balance. Is it good enough to keep rolling on for the next two, three, four years? I don't think it is. I reckon you've got, in my personal opinion, and again, we'll do the forum, uh, you've got too much error on the cars. I've been told by pretty good authority that, it, that since the inception of car of the future it's got as nearly as 30 percent more aero than what it meant to start or, or what it started out as because for whatever reason the figures have jumped up for whatever reason all right no, um, so so at least 30 percent of the downforce has got to come off mm. to make the racing better and both of your drivers well both of your drivers have said that publicly as even in New Zealand. All our drivers what you mean all your drivers? drivers okay well in, I've only in, seen and, quotes and from the two and well. that, that Aero is a problem, having too much aero in the cars, racing 
can for I, racing quality. Go. Can I come back to you? Go. Yeah. Cool. So, um, completely agree. If you go back to the um, advent of the car of the future, we had cutouts in the front splitter, mm. for instance. Mm -hmm. Right? Now we've got extensions. I mean, Nissan was running at one, I don't know, 1.215 mil long or something. So, the um, supercars lost control of the process. That's what happened. We had changing venues for doing the, the test, and the yeah. test, test wasn't conducted well enough. So we had, a, and then we had teams obviously trying to do whatever they could to, to maximize, and, it, and it's gone too far. And the point you, or, uh, you might have made earlier about the Nissan, which was the first car to run a sort of gurney on the back of the car, which um, uh, on the basis that it needed to equalize, we didn't take enough notice of the fact that the car was absolutely impossible to follow. Chuck you all dirty, kept, yeah. you yeah. kept saying it. Mm -hmm. oh, People, you it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That, so you couldn't follow the car, even if it had less horsepower. I don't know if it did or didn't. I kept getting told it did. But it was, you still couldn't follow it. So, and now we've got with the kick up on the Mustang, the gurney on the on Holden, and I don't know, we'll probably have a biplane on the Nissan next mm -hmm. week. Then it's getting even more difficult to, to follow and, and race. So it's not just an overall downforce, it's the way we're achieving the yes. downforce. Yep. Yep. And so what we're doing, and I think we're all pretty aligned on this, is we're going to go to the end of the year, supercars are in discussion this week actually with it's the homologation week, yeah. teams mm -hmm. um, about uh, the aims, how they're going to try and do it, and we're going to try and have a reset without costing us a lot of money. Right, so we're just going to try and be pragmatic, sensible, and say, okay, firstly we need parity between the cars, but secondly we want to try and lower the bar, maybe aim for 2013 for argument's sake, you know, of what we think we had there, if we can mm -hmm. get back to that area, and then in two years' time, which is another debate entirely about uh, what the next car looks like, then my belief is we should have. The only aero we should have is a balancing effect of the lift of the road car, like BTCC, Sorry. for instance. Stop getting your answer for that, huh? Yeah. You're in no, agreement with that? Well, because they'll have different yeah. Yeah. values. To, to defend the Commission to an extent, a lot of this was discussed and tabled at the Commission and spoken about, and, that, and it's basically been a direction from the Commission to the Technical Department to basically come up with this, this platform, which we'll learn more about later this week. So, who, so just to remind us who's on the Commission. So I'm an alternate. Yeah. Um, I'm currently voting because uh, Todd Kelly's resigned from his position. Right. But uh, it's Brad Jones as a right. team representative. Yeah. Tim Edwards as a team representative. Um, there's the chairman, Steve Horn. Yeah. Yep. There's Neil Crompton as the independent. No, he's done. He, well, he's, he's done. You've got, <laughs> he's, uh, he's resigned, you've got yeah. uh, Sean Seymour as the uh, CEO, yep. Shane Howard as the COO. Have I missed anyone wrong? No, that's it. That's the, that's the structure of the commission. The only thing that uh, concerns me a little bit um, is when they have the team principals meeting. Just have a bit of a look at this. The team motor, but obviously a huge involvement with supercars behind the scenes. So what I'd like to know is not so much where is the sport heading, but the next generation of car that's going to be coming through, a lot of people are keen to see and get a bit of a feel for what that's going to be like. What can you share with us in the early stages of that development? Nothing. Nothing at all? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, it, it, look, it's, it's concept and really the Commission have had very little chance to talk about it. It's something that how it normally works out is supercars put something together and then they come to the group and and uh, and then we talk to the other teams about it and where we're going and what we're doing. So, you know, it's it's a long way from being anything at this point in time. So, there you have it. Like to me, if I'm a punter looking at that, and that was just at tail and bend, I'm going. Well, they haven't even talked about next year's car or future cars. They, they don't have no idea of what's oh, going well, on. It's pretty it, much what you that, just said, but it said it a different way, wouldn't it? So I think that one of the things I've, I've spoken publicly. You understand perception. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've, yeah. I've spoken publicly about this, and it, it's yeah. pretty obvious. But GM have set the bar with their renewal with Roland. They basically said we're going to race the Commodore until the end of 2021, which means we do something different in 2022. Right. So we've got over a year to get it right. And we've got John Casey, who's just come back into the business as the chief strategy officer. He's yep. working on what the next generation car is. So in he'll the, head up that. He, he'll head that up from a supercars point of view in conjunction he is, he with is the teams. Oh, there you go. He's, 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 met, he's met with Roland. He's yeah. met with myself. I know he's met with others. And we've, we've started a table where we see this thing going. 
and and basically that's that's how this that's how this process needs needs to take place. Good. And it will involve it will. It that will, gives me some confidence. Yeah, well, that, well, that doesn't <laughs> though. With someone on the commission saying we we got no idea because we haven't been told anything. Well, he didn't actually say that, Russ. Well, did he? well, he did. I think that yeah. I think that part part of that too. <laughs> not not. Brad's not here, so, so I'll defend yeah. I'll defend on his behalf. Okay. It, in that particular instance, it's difficult. It's difficult to effectively relay and speak to supercars on their behalf in an instance like that. Mm. So yeah. the, the, the last thing you want to do is set expectations, talking about Gen 3, next gen car and all of this sort of thing, when, oh, yeah. when, when the process itself mm. is in its infancy and we're still talking about this thing as a, as a concept uh, and, and at a 10,000 foot. Anyway. I understand that, but the, the thing that anno well, not annoys me, disappoints me about it, is like the relaying the message of, of parity you know, relaying the changes and that. And there is definitely a fault with that. That's quite identifiable by the way the fans blow up. They don't deliver the message very well. And it's like that, uh, you know, team owners have to make sure they're, they're selling the sport as well. Yeah. They're at the forefront. They have to they have to sell the message that, yeah, we're on to, like, whether they've discussed it or not, just reassure well, race me, fans that, that something's been done. Yeah, well, let me say, Russell, yeah. uh, uh, something is going on. Yep. Uh, I would say where we're at uh, now in the in the conceptual base of where we're going in in hopefully two years time, just over two mm -hmm. years time, is that um, Ryan and myself, I can only you know only say what we've discussed. Mm -hmm. We're we're ninety five percent agreed on it. Tick 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 like that on where it is. You know, yep. there's so much of it is actually no brainer stuff that. Um, some of the people in pit lane will talk it to death and oh, I want to do this, want to look at that, want to. To be honest, you don't need to. An awful mm -hmm. lot of it just deals with itself. Once you adopt the 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 right mental approach to it of saying, okay, we can't afford to do what we did before. Yeah. Let's recut it. Let's see what we can afford and meet the market. Right. And things like we mm -hmm. introduced the extract gearbox this year, so we're gonna we're gonna keep we're gonna keep running that. Yep. So it's 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 it's, yep. it's it's a simple case of, of, of putting on your sensible cap and going through what we've got now, identifying the problems with the platform we've got now and possible ways to improve it, looking all at the high cost capital expenditure items that that, that make make up and take up the car mm -hmm. of the future spec car right so it's now. It's not gonna be a big revolution new car. Oh, it, it'll, I think there'll be, be some change. I think yeah. there'll be yeah, there'll be area, yeah. there'll be areas yeah. where, where you'll see that. But ultimately we need to have an affordable platform that that that, that we can race, that Triple A can race, and hell, you you folks have talked a lot about cost cutting. Let's get yeah. PMM back into the well, back I'm into supercars. Race con control can actually can control the race. Anyway, that's another that might be it may be maybe the next chat. And and unfortunately, much as we all like these engineering masturbation exercises yeah. because we because we you know as racing mm -hmm. people we do you know you've yeah. and you you both of you you know uh, uh, go on tv on you on your program and talk about cost cutting and we need mm -hmm. to have this control and that control mm -hmm. but back in the day we were flat you, out. you were flat out <laughs> you were flat out doing everything you could yeah. and if stone brothers had said to you Oh no, we're going to stick with this upright for the next five years. Yeah. You would have had a massive sad on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's be yeah. honest about yeah, it. That's true. We've all been a part of it. We've yeah. all benefited from it one way or another. And enjoyed another, it. Yeah. And enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I have over. I am a little bit older than you, not a lot, a year or two, for yeah, even longer than take. anyone in here. Yeah. But the but times change, yeah. and it doesn't matter whether you're looking at Formula One mm. or R NASCAR in a massive way you know, in 18 mm -hmm. months time, whatever it is, mm. or us, we have got to cut our mm -hmm. cloth according to yeah. the market. Yeah. Well, what's, and, cha and what's changed the sponsorship, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, we have, we have a population of 25 million people. Exactly. And mm. not, on, not only has the market changed for sponsorship, it's who's trying to grab it. You've got women's sports that, that, that are a new entry to the marketplace. Yeah. You've got cricket, cricket trying to get the cash. You've got all of these AFL, NRL right. teams. Everyone's after the same dollar. Yeah. We yep. put a new sticker on our car. <laughs> TCR. TCR. We, we put a new sticker on our car, and, and, and sure as hell, the sponsorship and marketing manager of that company will call me the following week and say, I've had from this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. This one, this one. And you yeah, know no, who those so people are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all know who the same dudders are in pit lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a really good point. But it's, it's basically the same dollar spread more, spread more thin. 
So we have to be really conscious of that. And and it it also talks about it also goes back to TCR and and, and some of the other series and 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 where we currently sit in the motorsport landscape. Um, Roland t- has talked about it a lot in terms of how many events we should be doing. We are a national sport where the premier national motorsport category. And again, we have a population of 25 million people. We need to make sure we get our race, our race product to the fans and that we give the supporters what it is that they want, but we can't go out of business doing it. No, correct. Yeah. So we all got Interesting. drunk on cigarette and manufacture money and it's not there anymore. <laughs> well, that's it. Uh, not <laughs> only us, not only no, us. It's, it's worldwide, it's, it's worldwide. W- worldwide, and you yeah. could, you've seen, one of the best examples in motorsport, and I know we've talked about it before, mm. but is MotoGP, came out of, I mean, they weren't just drunk on, on cigarette money, money. <laughs> they, they were completely gone, <laughs> they were smoked out of the room. Yep. So they were, <laughs> seriously, they were, um, and uh, even the small teams, you know, had incomes that you couldn't dream about. Yeah. So, and then bang, 2006, European Union, enough, mm-hmm. etc. And they went through a real period of hardship down to down to 12 14 yeah. bikes and a period when okay they put some claiming rules bikes in that were to be honest you know 10 seconds a lap slower and that sort mm-hmm. of thing just so it looked good on tv but look how they have used um the having to 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 take control of the of the um technical rules yeah. but also stop the manufacturers charging too much take control of their own media to build that thing back up to the to the best show on point, on, right? on wheels yeah. in the world. We, we've it's got two bit. good things going for us. We mm. control the TV production and we control the product. And and a lot of sometimes the control and a lot of sometimes the control in the TV isn't a good thing. No, because it's, a bit di- it's a bit dictated TV, no, like, and you only hear what you want to hear. And, and that and is I agree. Some, that is some of the problem with supercast TV. Oh, yep. there's too many yes men on there, mate. I, no, I found, Paul, yeah. I found it out when I was there, and I've went to you plenty about it, that I want to say... That's why you resigned. Exactly, yeah, that's, that's why right. I resigned and, and didn't take my pay out. <laughs> is that, and it annoyed me, that things I said that we should be telling the punters this. We should, shouldn't be glossing over this or sweeping under the rug and no, nah, won't do it. I can tell a qu- very quick story. I'll yeah. keep it very, very brief. Yeah. This, was, this, was, this was some years ago under a different head of television. There was a story that was being speculated about in Speed Cafe. Is he an F1 uh, now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention any names, right? Perhaps. Uh, <laughs> any, anyway, he, he and another person from Supercars came and sat in the, mm-hmm. in the lounge of, of our B trailer and said, oh, well, what, how do you want us to spin this? I said, well, it's already out there. Tell it how it is. Oh no, but we can we can do this. I said, no, no, no. It's already out there. It's in the public domain. Don't 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 spin it. Tell it how it, it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> and they were blown away that but, but that was my point of view on things. But <laughs> hell, if it's if it's if it's if it's on the web, everyone knows anyway. No why 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 if someone's reading it on their <laughs> iPad and they flick their channel over to watch us on the telly and they're talking about something different to what yeah, they've just bullshit. read or contradicting what they've no, just read. No, absolutely. It's a great way to get fans angry, I tell yeah, you. Correct. And right. that's, that's why I support your show, because yeah. I yeah, hope, as right. I said to you this morning, yeah, yeah. you've got to keep the editorial independence, yeah. Yeah. right? And, yeah. and, and that's why I support it. That's why I was prepared, even though I didn't want it, I was prepared to buy bloody auto action just to keep it alive five or six years ago because mm. I was worried it would disappear. Yeah. Not because I want the thing, but but uh, but because I just wanted to make sure there was somewhere where people could go and read something boss, that wasn't yeah. written by yeah. supercars. Not yeah. that supercars are writing all bad things. I just think that Town Hall shouldn't have control of the whole mm-hmm. of, the, of the media message. But where, yeah. where is, is it is an advantage is around these parity changes that we've seen this year. We have not effectively controlled the narrative yeah. to stop the Twitter sphere, Facebook, a- social, the absolutely. social media yeah. universe yeah. from what going do crazy. Is just give us a contract to do it. We'll handle it for them. Oh, then you'd have a vested interest. <laughs> <laughs> that would be impossible. We couldn't oh. do that for a minute. Why not? Well, you'd have a vested interest. You'd be taking money. I'd have them. to resign. Yes. <laughs> Jeez, everyone else is getting a lick. I reckon we should too. Can't be like that. Hey, hey, no, you've got to be independent, Russell. Yeah, yeah, no, jeez, I know. Right? No, I like the money though, Ron. But anyway. <laughs> Queen, you, you take goods in kind as well. Nowadays, I don't take anything. I've got a big garage. I'll, st- I'll stick any country in there. Hey, um, quick one. Thanks very much. 
Parity explained. I, I reckon that was so good. Now, quick one for you. Left field, only because of things happen on the weekend. Should the fuel drop be boned? Uh, so I believe, I believe that it should be, and re, and we've got 200 kilometer races mm -hmm. next year, where you've got a minimum of two pit stops. There was yep. some debate about three, but I think they've decided yeah, on two. Two, two, two. So two pit stops. What what I would consider is having an overall um, pit pit lane time for those two, like we do in Blanc Pain. We've got an overall, and they've got it slightly different reasons, but it's very policeable, an overall pit lane time from in for, the two, for inter out for the two stops. Then you'll in need those to put another data guy to work that out. Mm. No, you won't. It'll come up on the screen, the heartbeat, as we might Dogs look at. Dogs will be going minute. down pit lane, It'll looking be, at the timer, no, it, blocking it, the thing, running into no, it. No, it's very simple. Mate, people it, don't want to see that shit. They want but to they see don't the, have to. <laughs> the, the issue is that if we don't do it, if we don't do it, you're chasing so much of your time and your mm -hmm. people's time is chasing fuel flow right yeah. so you and you're there with um we've you know our fuel rigs are, are 11 years old they're made from plumbers bits from bunnings to yeah. be honest mm -hmm. yeah and uh, you're constantly trying to align them, make sure there's no inter interruption. You're trying to, you're chasing fuel flow into the car to the point where some teams over the last year or two have, to be honest, pushed the envelope a bit too far and had to be reined back mm -hmm. in what they were doing. So be careful of unintended consequences for it. At, at the end of the day, we need to make sure we're not just chasing something else all the time. I agree, have a green light and have a checkered flag. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, don't put us out of business doing it. So yeah. I've, 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 again, I've discussed some of these things mm -hmm. on the commission. I've got to be careful what I say or what oh, I say. Right. But the, the the Lambda rule that we bought in this year has yeah. stopped people leaning out engines. Okay. So yep. basically, everyone's fuel economy is pretty close to being the same. So just to be clear, that yeah. first that rule was bought in to even up the Mercedes engine, I think. The fuel drop was for yeah. Nissan. For Nissan, 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 Nissan order yeah, because they're burning more fuel. Well, hey, I explain Lambda, Paul, for. Oh, I guess it's, it's like how much fuel the car's burning. It gives you a reading of yeah, how, okay. how rich or how fuel air mixture. Fuel, yeah, fuel air, air mixture. mixture. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so. And that's taken a little bit to get right because it means you've got to run a closed loop exhaust, which means that your exhaust is completely sealed and you've got sensors in there that measure, measure, the, measure the lambda within the exhaust system and, it, and it's effectively Yeah, it effectively so the fuel changes drops there it. to stop you leaning your motor off because you've got to burn the fuel anyway or put it in yeah, the so car. I, th I think that between the lambda rule, we've, we're, we're, there's still a little bit to go. They've only just started policing elements of that now just yep. because it's been mm -hmm. such a big fundamental change. Mm -hmm. yep. um, if, if you have a, if you hit a curb hard, hard yeah, and all of a sudden you, your exhaust comes a little bit loose, the closed loop system doesn't work. But then second to that, there's some engine changes coming for, for next year, which is about getting a bit more life out of the current motors mm -hmm. that we've got now. So yep. I think we need to see what the fuel economy looks like with that. So, so if you've got to leave your engine in a car for a few races, you're not going to lean it out, right? Hell no. Mm. Okay. Because to me, it's confusing. For, for, what happens if for, you have for a the catastrophic event? Is it, you yeah, you, you, yeah, you, get, yeah. you get some leeway with yeah. that sort of things. Because right. the fuel drop's confusing. And, and we've spoken about it. Oh, we spoke about it in New Zealand. And, to the and, punter and, on the hill well, watching. Um, Scofie and Neil do a great job of explaining it. But if you're the person on the hill, you have yeah, no that, idea what's going just, on. But think about also, if we do do that, we're then going to, to every car, we'll pretty much start with a full fuel tank. Mm. Yeah. Right? Now, so... Yeah. The, and then the, everyone will be on pretty much the same strategy. Yeah. If you go back to, I can't remember his tail and bend, because um, I'm quite old now, but mm -hmm. that's a few weeks ago. But, yeah. but we deliberately put too much fuel, which people do every, some people took, put mm -hmm. too little, up. but we put too much so that we could go on with one of our cars way past when everyone else stopped. Because yeah. Yeah, mm. we said there's a low safety car risk. Right? No. Very low safety car risk. Absolutely. Yeah. So you had a completely different strategy in play. And you'll take that away. Yeah. Because it, at the moment, we're going to be in pit lane for all give or take the same amount of time. Where as soon as, you, if we did that, if we said we're going to start on low tanks in a supercar, unfortunately, the pit lane times are so long, with the possible exception of mm -hmm. Perth, that there's no way that it pays you back by doing that. Right. Whereas in yep. F, if a F1, as you know, mm -hmm. yeah, else. when then yeah. it can have a, a payback. Yeah. You know, when yeah, they yeah. used to yeah. refill yeah. in F1. And it's the whole idea of having the second 200-kilometer race on Saturday came from talking to Sean. Okay, Sean, you're in the middle of talking about renewing TV deals and all those sorts of things. What's the biggest opportunity? Saturday ratings. All right. Well, it's the best race is a Sunday. 
Why not replicate it? Yeah. And it's easy for the punter it's to understand. It's just confusing. The fuel drop thing's just confusing because it seems like on the telecast, all they're doing is constantly talking about fuel drop and graphs and just make it easy, you know? But, but somewhere, it's Russell... It's not an easy thing to watch. If you're not careful, you'll rem there's an element of strategy that's come with that and how much fuel you put in mm. at that drop. You know, we're talking about do you take eight seconds and try and drop in front of somebody? I don't know. Or do Half you... your audience has turned off, but... Well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but then we've got to explain <laughs> yeah. it better. But there's also there's more to, more to come when we talk a bit about safety cars later. There's a little bit of that strategy linked into that. But the other side of it too is that next year with the sprint formats, with the two races mm -hmm. being the same, it's going to be easier for the punter to understand. They can tune in on Saturday. Saturday. It's, just, it's just going to be yeah, the same format, simpler. same race as what Two compounds of tyres during a race, you have to use both. There's your strategy. But again, what happens is it, it works for one year the, or yeah, half a year, and then place. everyone does mm -hmm. the same thing. Exactly. Start on the hard, end up on, the, on soft. the soft. That'll mm. that'll be what happens. Mm. So, uh, yeah, careful what you wish for. What it's what a, what what Triple Eight have done with Gears a couple of times this year, with with running him long, he's popped back up the top at the end. Yeah, Nick Perkett did. And he gets a safety yeah, car at the end. Yeah. yeah. Nick Perkett did yeah, a great job on Sunday's yeah. race. He did. On, and he was only stymied by the fact that the cars are too difficult to pass. So when we saw him pop up behind, he was five seconds behind Mostert yeah. after the stop. Yeah. What? Yeah. Sorry, we, yeah. we, we, we're no, using up right. too no, much. No, 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 no. But this could be a three-hour show. Yeah. <laughs> but but that was the that was yeah. strategy. Yeah. And it was making it interesting yeah. Yeah. because we're watching and watching and watching, and he's come out. And I don't know. I was listening to telecast, and they didn't. I don't think they read it properly. But he popped out five seconds behind Mostert. Bang. Straight up to Mostert. Right, yeah. Bumper and nothing. We're discussing it in our pit bunker, mm -hmm. and um, and Shippy said to me, "No, don't worry about it. He'll never get past Chaz." I wish he didn't. No. He should have been able to. Front yep. tyres got hot, and he was done. Yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Done. Fuel drop right. stays. Right. Cool. Uh, well, I think we've torn the parody debate wide apart. Thanks for answering all those. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot clearer to me. And I'm a lot dumber than half of our viewers, so, so you've achieved something, you, you too. It. So that's pretty cool. Hey, uh, now, look, we've always got to do with it. All our guests come on, you know that. I mean, how good was it in the three-wheeler when you brought your car in, Roland? We've got to do something on track. So we've devised a little plan. We're going to get out and we're going to do some shootout laps. So it's Roland and the dude against the enforcer and the story. So we're, we're, we're going to go out, uh, shoot out laps. The doctor, mate. I'm uh, the doctor. I'm sorry, the, the doc. Sorry, the doc. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're going to go shoot out laps in the 86, full on. This is, we're going to see parody between you two. <laughs> well, if there is any parody, yep. I'm tipping there's not. Let's get out there and cut some laps. What do you reckon? Yeah, cool. Let's Done. go for let's it. Do let's it. Do, it. do it. Do it. Before the rain starts. Yep. All right, Ryan, now this is, uh, we're going to do a, a shootout lap, right? So all our guests have to bring in like a car normally, but this time, because this is a bit of a special episode, it's going to be a shootout between Ryan Story <laughs> and Roland Dane, all right? Now listen, I'm wearing Dick Johnson's helmet, but I just want to make clear I lack his talent <laughs> and ability. Hey, but hopefully something rubs off, all right? So I'm going to be coaching you, as we are, and mate, we've got to win this. We got to win it, all right? Damn straight. Let's no, go. Nothing's worse than Roland Dane winning this, all right? So we got, we can go around, start the lap. So we got two time laps. I'll tell you when we're on it, okay? You done this before? Maybe. <laughs> you don't sound very confident. So I'll coach you around, all right? When we start the lap. Give on the gas, rightio. Feet, just feed it on and then flat. We'll gear you in. Third. Third, yeah, keep, keep it up to third. That's it, get ready to go and now. Another gear, back to second. Tip it in, nice and tight. Keep it in second. Nice and smooth on the brake. All right, we're coming up to the start of the lap, all right? Here we go, make me proud. Ryan Story. Gentle on the brake, here's the start, go. Keep it in second. Gentle on the brake, on the gas. Flatten it, go, flat. 
third, yeah. Feed it in. Keep it there. No break, no break. Feed it in. Keep it there. Flatten it. Rightio. Break. Second gear. That's it. Feed the throttle. Flatten it. Go. Let it rev out. Not too early on the not too early on the gear changes. Keep it flat. Keep it flat. Keep it flat. I'll tell you when to break. Ready? Keep it going. Keep it going. Break. Second gear. That's it. Tip it in. Feed the throttle. Get it down. That's it. Tip it in. Go. Feed it on. Keep it in second. Gentle on the brake. Down on it. This is our last lap. Let's go. Let's make it the one. Right here. Hard on the gas. Third. Keep it flat. A little bit of a back off. That's it. Keep the speed up. Keep it going. You're all right. Flatten it. Beautiful. Keep it going. Keep it going. And brake. Ran a little bit wide there. Second gear. Go, go, flatten it. That's it. Keep it flat. Flat, 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 flat. Flat. You ready? I'll get ready with the brake. Keep it going, keep it going. Now. Second gear. That's it. Flatten it. Keep it going, I'll tell you when to brake. Now. You're right, turn it in. Turn it in, that's it, flatten it. Beautiful. Get on the gas. Light brake, flatten it, go. Flatten it, flatten it, keep it in second, flat. Flat, 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 flat. Got it. <laughs> All right, let's bring her in. I don't think it's bring her in. I'll take her in. <laughs> Oh, nice shit. job, mate. <laughs> Good job. That was a pretty clean lap. Oh, I ran too wide through the sweeper there. Oh, God damn it. Mate, it wasn't too bad for someone that hasn't done it too much. That's good. Just pull her up here. Nice work, mate. That was great. <laughs> good job. Good job. It's a good lap. Is that good or yeah, not? Yeah, it's pretty Very good. good. Yeah, it's two oh, up. Yeah. Two up, eight, four. Okay. Good. Not bad. Not bad. Must be a good coach there, Russ. Hi. Hey? The best. Yeah. We'll no, come up with a strategy. We'll find, we'll find out. We'll find out. There's clearly a weight handicap here. Now, do we need, do we need <laughs> to make a parity adjustment? Yeah, yeah, we we do. Do. How many laps have you done a Randy? You know, About three. Oh, 3,000. No, That's not true, Russell. All right. Uh, hey, oh, uh, oh, Roland. Oh, yeah. We're thinking we need to do a parity adjustment yep. with a gurney on the rear here. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, we need that. We've got to put this on. Yeah. It equalises the downforce. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, yeah. that could really screw up the entry to that over there. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, that's it. That'll be good, mate. Is this going through the commission? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. I'm worried about that. I should do it. And then, no. then there's a, one more little... I'll let you do that. Oh, there's okay. one more little parity adjustment I'm going to make. All right. What? You're taking off a plug lead or something? No, you don't switch all that. <laughs> what are you switching off? The you, air get the air, you get the aircon on. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, that looks good. Right. <laughs> oh, that off. Oh, that's 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 yeah. Oh, that's shit off. Right. What do we got? Well, we need to get our settings right. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see how we go. That's a good time. Was it? Yeah, it's good. Oh, yeah, eight's good, because I think one of the boys out there only went out and did a seven. Oh, shit. That's going all right. I'm, just, I'm quite happy doing brakes. I've done them before. Um, oh, is it hot? Yeah. Which way's up and which way's down? I think the right's up. Have we got the traction off? Yeah. Which gears do you reckon I should use here? Down another one. Wait, 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 wait. Now send it. Get it right on the bottom. Probably hang. 
hang out a bit longer. And another gear. Oh, that's a nice corner, mate. Oh, don't get too greedy. <laughs> bit of curb, mate, bit of curb. Alright, hold it flat. Don't lift, don't lift, don't lift. Next one's a left. Oh, okay. It's coming good. Get it to the curb, get it to the curb. Second or third? We're going all the way, the way. Oh, wow. Downshift, 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 downshift. Did. Didn't f***ing respond. Hit it again. Leave it in, leave it in that gear. Let it pull. That's it. That's better. There you go. Try not to smash the pedal so hard. There you go. Downshift another one. Get too greedy on the throttle on the way out. Now you can go. That's better. That's it, mate. Good lap. We needed the aircon in the end. I know. It's fogged up. Oh. Must have been all that porn on your phone. What did, what did I do? What was your time? I don't know. What did what I, I do? What, what did Ryan do? Eight four. Something. Shit. It's the same, it's the same lap time. <laughs> what? 10842, exactly the same time. Are you kidding me? There's parody for you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you have more down for us. You're bloody good, yeah, you're two bastards. We're at 100 kilos more. That's true. I can't believe that. Are you serious? Yeah. There's at least 40 kilos down for us in there, Gary. <laughs> Plus, uh, what am I, 110? Probably 40 kilos difference in weight. Yeah, but he's yeah. been here before. Huh? He's been here before. You know what the key was? What? <coughs> Mark Larkin's old helmet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pole position of Bathurst in 1884. Oh, really? Yeah. That was it. Hey, same time. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> That's really good. Well done, guys. Well done. I can't believe that. Like, to the 10th. Oh, to the the first, what was the second lap? There was, that was a second lap. That was one, 108.42. Yeah. That was oh. your fastest. The second lap was faster. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> well done, guys. We'll see. We'll see. Huh? Oh, oh. You, oh you got the data. <laughs> <laughs> it's best to <laughs> <for a debrief. laughs> I think we've, we, we know enough. There's no point in going any further. We, we know don't enough. Parody, parody yeah. is, uh, Parody's spot on between you two. spot on. Hey, you two have got the perfect parody. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. I thought we agreed to stop talking about that. Okay, word. no more parody. Right, Swanson's. we're out. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of Enforcer and the Dude. And uh, we, we're going to jump into a very controversial situation that happened in New Zealand. Um, the safety car. Guys, what the hell went on there? Who, what, who's going to stick their hand up first? <laughs> well, <I think> <laughs> right. Right, let's have a glass of red while we have it. Oh, mate. <laughs> Paul, no, no drinking on the job, mate. 
No frog no, on the grog? One. No frog on the grog. No frog on the grog. All right, we'll give that to Jamie then. Can you take yeah. that back to Jamie? <laughs> I can't. There's just no, no. Take that back to Jamie, will you please? Sure, mate. <laughs> no worries. No way. <laughs> no, 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 it's a bit of syrup, mate. Yeah. yeah, okay. No red wine, mate. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, not on the job. Mate. Only up for us. So, Roland, come on. You've always, um, you've always got plenty to say. Me? Yes. Well, it affected both of you guys. So you don't don't, True. don't, was, don't, don't up, get splinters down. here. I was right, one up, go. one down. I had a. Yeah, okay. Scott, Scotty was the beneficiary of, of, of all of that. Yep. And, and won his record 17th race in a season. So I don't want to take away from, from that achievement from him. But, right. but uh, we should have had probably two cars in the top five there. Yeah. Because Fabian was running pretty competitively and uh, his race was heard accordingly. So it was a, from, our, from our end, it was a bit one up, one down. But. Uh, my uh, my learned friend here has uh, has some deep analysis that's uh, very hard to dispute. <laughs> well, uh, the roads are coming. The the thunder's starting. So I think I think the racing a, gods have spoken. They want to hear what's happening. A bit of a feeling something's about to go down. <laughs> well, I think most of Australia would welcome the rain. So let's be with it. Yeah. Um, the you need to make sure that we don't muddy the waters here. So the first thing that I'd say. Are you serious? <laughs> Muddy the waters after the schmozzle of the weekend. Oh, no. so, Are you I'm, I'm, I'm trying from? to make sure that uh, yeah. that what we do yep. is properly analytical. Okay. So what Jamie did in passing the safety car when the orange light was on and what he said afterwards, those are things that are separate issues. He was wrong um, in uh, what he did. Yeah, the referee had blowed the, blown the whistle. The uh, <clears throat> play was should be neutralised. Doesn't matter whether the referee's got the call right or wrong. That's the, that's what you have to do. He knows that. Um, I think he's probably said it now in public that he shouldn't have done that. Um, he probably went a little bit far with his comments afterwards. But again, you know, heat of the moment, athlete performing at a high level, uh, etc. Those things will happen. And what we don't need to do as a category is um, have a sort of Thai style, by Thai I mean Thailand, style laissez majest law, which prohibits you from saying anything about anyone that yeah. could be controversial. Yeah. That's, that's nonsense, okay? Yep. You, but having said that, if you go a bit too far, oh, sorry, guys, okay, and, and move on, park it. Hmm. So I think um, we have to separate that away from the schmozzle over the actual safety car deployment. Um, and which affected different people in different ways. Uh, Scotty was, as you said, the, the beneficiary of right place at the right time. Uh, and that's, to be honest, that'll happen every so often, etc. It's certainly not Scotty's fault. It's not Team Penske's fault, etc. That's the way it rolled. What is evident, though, is that on Saturday we had a very good safety car deployment in almost identical circumstances. And yet on Sunday... It was screwed up. And really, like Jamie showing a little bit of um, humility and apology after the event about what he's done, um, I'm disappointed, to be honest, that the officials on Sunday and latterly haven't put their hands up and expressed some humility and apologized for what they did incorrectly um, after, after the race. Can we um, can we have a look at something? Um, sure. I want to show you because you guys probably haven't seen it. Um, it's an extract that I took out of um, Neil Compton did an interview with Dave Stewart and Tim Schenken uh, after the race well, yep. that night. You can see it's okay. dark, so let's uh, let's oh, just yeah. let's just park up for a minute. A lot of emotion. There's quite a few people down there saying some some pretty tough things. Uh, you have to have fairly thick skin to be able to deal with that. You've done it at a Formula One level and you've done it with supercars as the race director over a long period of time. What's your take? And uh, obviously, what you and say uh, what you and David say is going to be in sync. But what's your take on this and the kind of blow up that occurs around it? Well, what David was explaining is exactly correct, but the issue is that when we deploy the safety car, in some circumstances, and this is uh, this, this circuit, as David said, uh, short circuit, long pit lane, you don't know immediately who the leader is. So you've got to 
hold the first car that's approaching, you actually determine where the leader is, the safety to the safety car two line, which is uh, after the pit exit. Yeah, the SC two line, which is on your track map up on the the back wall here. Exactly. So that will that would determine and confirm to us who the actual leader is. Anything could happen in the meantime. The leader could stall. What the people who think the leader is could stall in pit lane have some issues so we have to be confident that when we identify the leader we then pick up the right car so that was exactly the situation here so we hold the field identify the leader and wave any cars between uh, the, the, the car behind the safety car and the leader through so as far as you gentlemen are concerned 100 percent no issue on this side 100 percent a competitor management issue yes yes exactly yes yes and i gotta say and this is going to, you're not going to like this one but uh, the words that were offered by one of the drivers were it's cruisy for you guys there's red wine the night before you're not as committed to the task as a racing driver what do you say to that we are committed and i think everybody knows that i haven't heard what uh, whoever the driver was i haven't heard what he said but i think most people know we are absolutely committed what do you think yeah i, I I hadn't seen it. Have you, had you seen it or not? No, I'd heard about it. I haven't seen it. But, yeah. uh, Three yeah. under the bus pretty well. Well, you mean the, the teams, teams and the teams. drivers? Yeah, they did. Um, oh, I, it was I, there. If I, if, I were them, if I were them, I probably would have waited a little while before I expressed uh, an opinion about what went on. Because I think the evidence Well, they just shows shows through the rule book found a rule that makes them right. <laughs> That's what they've done. <laughs> How can we save our RC? Oh, that oh, I can do that on cans. <laughs> if that was any other industry, you'd be, be it's uns, you, you're not capable of doing it. But, but don't say that. And and again, we we talk about the TV side of it. Don't don't do that. Don't don't send someone up there that's already got a bit of a biased view on it, or, or trying to cover this thing up to saying. Which side are you on? I mean, there's, there's no protection yeah, Neil should have probed him. Like, yeah, no, no. he knows they've, Neil they've messed it Neil up. Neil prompted that question. Neil prompted that question. 100% you're in the clear. It, it, was, it, it, was, it was, he answered the, the question. He answered the question, his own question, before Tim Schenken did. So you reckon that was just a schmooze job? It's there. <laughs> Form your own opinion. I don't know what my opinion I just don't, is. I don't understand <laughs> how you can get it right on Saturday and, and the length well, of the What Russ is saying is... Neil's not calling them out, and that's his job. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's true. That's a, that's a separate thing. But how can how can it be right on Saturday and 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 a, sh and a long pit lane and a short racetrack be irrelevant? But then well, all of that? those things be that? relevant. It the doesn't matter. Dave Stewart said it, and Tim just picked it up. Oh, I don't understand what no, they mean look, by that. Look, like, I, what? I understand. I understand that the relationship between a, a 102, 103 lap, you know, sixty three yep. seconds. time lap, to think. And a, and a, a 40, 44, 43 second yeah. drive through time in pit lane right. gives you less time to think. But we've got, as teams yeah. and supercars, we have got a really, really good software system. We've got a tracker, tracking map for all yep. the cars. We've got more mini sectors on our circuit than probably any other national category in Europe has. In, by comparison, in terms of picking up where the cars are, so we don't use GPS uh, like Formula One or MotoGP does to position the cars on track. We use um, we use timing loops, of which they refer to the safety car SC2 line. Mm -hmm. yep. That's one of them uh, that we use, and that gives you a really good view of what's going on at pretty much any time. So the tools are there. Tools are there to do a good job, as maybe we can maybe we can demonstrate. Russell. We, well, you've brought some data in to have a look at. Yeah. And, and the data you have is exactly what the teams use and what the officials use. Everything's available. Correct. Right. Yeah, but Correct. Exactly the same data. But it's fair to point out. So when you watch it at home on television yep. and you watch a qualifying lap, they have three sectors, but. What what's Roland's referring to as the micro sectors mm -hmm. is that within one of those larger sectors there could be three or four micro sectors within that yeah. within that okay, sector. Okay, so it's pretty accurate. Well, oh, you're, it's if accurate you're a punter well. at home and you got the supercar app, yeah, you know exactly where all the cars are. Well, you were saying you're at you're at Ipswich Raceway with the Honda XLs and you knew the, who the leader of the race was just watching it on your phone. My dad's sitting in Greece watching it on that soft and he can tell who the leader <laughs> yeah, is. <right. laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. It's pretty sharp, yeah. though, TM. Yeah. If you've been around racing, you know that that's yeah. just 
not they, they, they made a mistake. Right. All right, Roland. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Take us yeah. through. Take us yeah. through. Yeah, that. No, I will. I'll, uh, I'll drive the um, I'll drive the data. You jump Are you up. capable of that? I say probably not. Okay. So <clears throat> so what you've got here yes. is um, a snapshot of the what we all refer to as the KD data, which is the right. Ken Douglas. Uh, software. Yep. This is a map, Pukekohe, start right. finishes here, and you can see there's timing sectors all around here. Not just the big one here and the big one there that yep. come up on the on the app, but these mini ones that Ryan was referring to as well that really increase the accuracy of the information that's fed mm -hmm. to all of us. So, pit lane entry is here. Pit lane exit is over here. And what we've got at the moment is uh, we've just we've completed 11 laps. Uh, Jamie Winkup is here, and the leader is is circled. That that big right. circle there is is uh, 88 leading the race. You can see that they, at this precise moment, Will Davison's in the pits. Right. You can also see that uh, where do we go back to here? So Lee Holdsworth has pitted already. Yep, and you, you can see can, Fabian's pitted and he's just in front of Jamie so on the track. Yeah, so you've got uh, Lee Holdsworth, yeah. Cameron Waters, Fabian Coulthard and Andre Hungartner have all, all pitted already. See the big gap here? 24 seconds to leader, 57. Yeah. Right. They've been, they've been through the pits. Yes. So, and there, there's another column that they'd have access to that says how many pit stops you've done, right? Okay. And it also, it also says how long you are probably stationed for E4. It does a compute of how long you're stationary for in pit right. lane, in addition to So this. it's pretty clear, pretty very, clear, very clear. So anyway, here's Jamie ste steaming around on his 12th, on his 12th lap. Yep. And if you look here from a, a racer's point of view, you've got these three cars have pitted and come out just ahead. Then they're, they're not quite a lap down. Right. Right. They're three quarters of a lap down. And what's happening here, pause for a minute, please, Russell, is that you can see Jamie is very, getting closer and closer to Fabian. Yeah. And from a strategic point of view, we're thinking Fabian's going four or five tenths a lap slower than Jamie is. He's got a, a bigger fuel load on board. So we're going to pit Jamie before he gets held up. Yep. Otherwise, when it all pans out, he's going to have lost time. Mm -hmm. So resume playing. And and you'll see behind here, that car uh, is a lap down to Jamie. That car's a lap down. They've both pitted as well, mm -hmm. the 7 and the 14. So steaming through here. And where are we? We are 11 and a half laps into the race. <laughs> um, Shane's just overtaken um, Mostert. And going through this sector here. And then... In the last sector, you suddenly see that Jamie's gone into the pit. See? Stop there a second. Yep, he's gone off screen. See? Jamie, yes. in, he's gone off here because he's popped up in pit lane. Right. Pit. Right? Clear yep. as daylight. Yep. Carry on. So now we're rolling through and Jamie's still in pit lane and the next car on track is Scotty. Bang. He's gone through the start finish here and he's now the leader. Circled. Pretty clear, I would have said. <laughs> and what's more is on here. So the leader's got a big circle around it. So That's hold, very there, clear. hold there for a second. And you can see leader's got a circle, but here yeah. on the timing screen. That's like the yellow jersey. Yeah, hmm. correct. Yeah. Or, He's the leading orange, the, or the orange and orange. <laughs> so Scotty's leading the Tour de France right now. Yeah. So you don't have to freeze the field and put the safety car out to work out how the leader is. We've established well, that. It's very clear. So yeah. you've got two pitters that lap. You've got Jamie <laughs> and you've got Courtney. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, meanwhile, the car that was eventually going to cause the safety car is here, Davy Reynolds, but he's still at racing speed. Yeah. So he he's still on route, thirteen seconds behind the leader, mm -hmm. etc. Yep. So we got a very normal uh, race track. No mm -hmm. incidents. Mm -hmm. People pitting. All cycling going cycling through. Right. And and we're in a we're in a pit we're in the middle of a pit lane cycle from a mm -hmm. racing point of view. We're in the middle of a cycle. We know everyone's probably got to stop by about, I don't know, 20-ish, there or thereabouts. 
the pit lane, sorry, the window to get to the end of the race opens about 25, 26. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do your first one by about 20. Otherwise, you're going to run out of fuel, fuel as well. Yep. So carry, carry on. So there's nothing extraordinary happening. No, no, that's my point. Exactly. So Jamie is popping down the order as he's in pit lane, long pit lane, as we've said, uh, et cetera. And then you'll, <coughs> so Davy Reynolds still moving at speed. Um, the Andre Heimgartner is the last of the cars that hasn't been lapped of the pit stoppers because a couple have, um, that have been. So now Scotty, Scotty's rolling here through here. You're going to see that Davy starts to have an issue here. And, but see how, so he's moving there slowly. So you circuit. can see he's moving slowly now, Get but Jamie's past. out of pit lane. Mm -hmm. yep. He's he's on, uh, on the lead lap. He's yep. about three quarters of a lap down, but he's ahead of Holdsworth, uh, etc. And he's first of the pitters. Mm -hmm. First of the people. Probably pitters. also worth pointing out on the green flag conditions, your first stops around nine seconds. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. tend to be the top yeah, policy. Yeah. yeah. So it's freeze there a sec. Yep. So you'll see that Davy actually he's in this sector, yes. right? This mini sector here, and. That, that um, he's going through the, you know, discovering where he was with his engine. I think he had a throttle mm -hmm. linkage problem, etc. Then he's realized that I could probably get back to the pits. Mm -hmm. And not dissimilar to that we had um, uh, Frosty's car here oh, Frosty, yep, yep. on, yeah. uh, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, they allowed the... About safe... the same time in the race too. Correct. Right? Very similar time. Some people had pitted and Jamie included and taken on a light fuel load. So, and at that point... They let the field cycle so that it was clear who was where, right? And then some people were gainers and losers on fuel load. That's, we all accept that. That's the way it is. But the, f the field had cycled through. So right now, you've got Davy Reynolds somewhere, somewhere in that area. Yep. Um, Stanaway's probably seen before that there was a potential problem there because he would have been behind Davy Reynolds on track. And then he's popped into the pits. Popped in, yeah. Yep. So... Uh, carry on, carry on playing now, and you'll see any second now the safety car's called. So stop. Okay, so safety car's been called. Right, bang, like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So safety car's been called very quickly. I'm not sure why. Maybe there were ducks on track or something. I'm not sure, but the <laughs> the safety car has been called far quicker than the day before, and uh, even though. And so Davey's in the sector, sorry, and Jamie is coming through here, aware that the safety car's out, but also aware that he has made his stop. Other people haven't. Key competitors, including his teammate, so he's got to haven't. get a move on. So you've got to, you've effectively, you know, you can't sit, sit around. You've got to get a move on, as everyone knows, as part of racing. Fabian's in the same position. The two uh, Tickford cars are in the same position. We're probably not going to be ideally placed because we put in less fuel than they're going to be. So we've got to make the most of this. Mm -hmm. So if you if you now resume and you'll see, and the leader still has a big circle around it. If funnily enough, yeah. So, but that can't work out who it is. <laughs> so we've got Jamie. Clearly, he hasn't been in the lead for some time now, and he's cycling through cycling through here under <laughs> the uh, safety car has been called. Safety car's moved out onto track now. See. So it's pretty clear, and Jamie has come through, but he's still not up there because he isn't leading. But these guys, of course, they're taking the advantage of the opportunity to pit. So they're all popping in there. And normally what would happen was the safety car would have a green light on because nobody in their right minds would think that Jamie Winkup was leading the race. Why has he got, an 80, why has he got a circle around the 88 now? Because this is our software. Okay. Right. Oh, that was always there. So, well, if you if you look, yep. we've got he's got a he's got uh, something because, funnily mm -hmm. enough, we keep an eye on that bloke. Yep. And yep. he's got something because he's his teammate, right? Yep. Everyone yep. else, we don't pay any. Sorry, that's a bit harsh. Yeah. But, <laughs> but there's nothing on, nothing on here. There's no nothing so, on here that says who the leader is. But they can look over at the timing over the here because the leader's in, the in here. Yeah. The leader's in the pits. Yeah. Right. So the leader now is in the pits. Yeah. Yeah. He's still there. He's yeah. still the leader. Right. He's still yeah. there now. Jamie has incorrectly gone past the safety car right right he's gone past there's no question that was wrong yeah but the safety car should have had the green lights on 
And then all these people who had been the early pit stoppers, right? Should have driven past. They should have gone past. Past. Yeah. Right? So and then carry on, and you'll see. Then Scotty obviously pops out, <clears throat> uh, pops out of the pitters. He pops out first. But if, because you could, as we know, Jamie's traveling around mm -hmm. quickly, not behind the safety car, and he gets to the lead of the proper lead of the race mm -hmm. before Scotty exits the pit lane. Now, if that, see, now right. he's yep. come Done. up and got to the safety car line, yep. right? So what, and if you stop there, all these people here should have been here. Yes, exactly. Right? Ah, they yeah, all right. should have been there. Right. Yeah. If they had been allowed to go racing properly, mm -hmm. they all would have been through there, behind 88, and then you would have had Scotty and Giz behind him. Right. So if you, if you then cycle through, you'll see that all the pitters get a free kick and start go. popping out here. See, they're all popping out here. Meanwhile, that hasn't picked up that he's actually gone into pit lane. But the guy that started it all, actually, he's got back to the pits. You'll see that come up in a second. That he's, uh, So he didn't go to there. He ended up in pit lane. Pit lane. So <laughs> Davy Reynolds is now in pit lane, not on the circuit. So the reason we needed the safety car dissipated, but whatever, these, mm -hmm. things, these things can happen. So that's... Jamie's now the leader of the race. And, and all the guys behind the safety car were just being screwed. All these guys <laughs> being completely screwed over. <laughs> and that was it. That was a... Yeah. That, that was it. <laughs> so um, was it visible? Who was the leader? I think it's pretty clear who was the leader at all times. That We have got software and timing that is not perfect, but is pretty bloody good by any standards wherever mm -hmm. I've been, short of, short of F1. So, and we've also got some great software by Kenny Douglas that's been around for some years and refined all the time, etc. Honestly, it's no excuse to know who, who, not to know who the leader of the race is. And the other thing is that we didn't have a guy in the wall. We didn't have a car on fire. And in those uh, circumstances, I 100% agree. You just got to lob the safety car, put whoever's behind it behind it, and then, and then see where it all ends up. The first thing is the safety of the situation. But you know and the I know... The you're getting at is the recovery of that car would have been very quick. Yeah. The recovery uh, but, but, but the, well, if, there was if, no if, emergency. If, yeah. But we, it wasn't... And Jamie had driven past it. Yep. He knew that the car was slow there. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't on fire, it wasn't, et cetera. So we had... Um, we're prepared at the end of Bathurst to have local yellows with a car on the wall on the mountain. So that we finish the race properly. Yeah, if that was the last lap, that wouldn't have been, they would have just raced on with double yellows. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. If we'd had a, a, we've had a car in the gravel at turn six in Tasmania, which, as you know, is one of the fastest parts of the country, and finished with a yellow there, um, and a and a green track elsewhere. So, honestly, we didn't we didn't we jumped the gun in the first place. Mm -hmm. Saturday was perfectly run. Sunday wasn't, and I would urge all those involved, and I can't. Tim Schenken is a friend of mine. I've known him for 40 years, probably longer than anyone in this paddock, pretty much. And uh, but sometimes you need you need to say, guys, that was a mistake. Exactly the same as Jamie Winkup needed to say it was a mistake, and have a little bit of humility about it. And then we can all move on, and we can say, let's do a better job next time. Well, it's not hard. Well, it's, is it? it's, not, it's not also moving on. It's identifying the problem again. Identifying a problem. I mean, Thanks for that too, Roland. That was, uh, That's no, great. It was a pretty clear yeah, was cut. Good. Very, very good. And, and thanks to Ken Douglas for putting that together for us. Is identifying the problem, sticking your hand up, and going, righty, eh? Let, let's let's all talk about this amongst the teams and everyone else. How can we make sure this doesn't happen again? But this this reoccurring problem like this, it just well, comes up all the time. We've had one of these for a long time. Oh, other things, eh? Other but the bloke that's recover. missing now is Michael Massey. That's true. Michael Massey was clearly the guy that was keeping that control tower in order. And it, to me, it looks like they're lost without him. So now, uh, just to explain to everyone, Michael Massey was... He, assistant I, race director. I, assistant race director. He was probably the succession plan. He was for the down succession. The road was, with yeah. him. And um, obviously, with the, with the sad death of Charlie Whiting, um, 
he was elevated to that job, probably to his surprise, but he's done a fantastic job. I know Michael. I mean, he is a seriously good operator and very dedicated to his job, and I'm sure he had a, a lot more influence behind the scenes than probably But he, he was heading to Europe anyway. Yes. He, yeah. he, 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 he was too to, good. He, yeah. He was too good. Too he, good. he was too good to be here, and unfortunately for us. Mm. But, it, yeah, I mean, I talked about him being the succession plan years ago. Mm. And um, uh, and he to me, he was, unfortunately, though, uh, from our selfish point of view, um, he was in the last year or two has been clear that he was going to go to Europe. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I've had my differences with Michael, and mm-hmm. we've all known him a long time. But overall, the, his level of competence is extremely high mm. and difficult to difficult for us to replace. Having said that, we have got some great tools. All we need to do is mm-hmm. use them. So what? So what from here to make sure? This gets resolved because, like I said, at the moment, it's we, we, we heard the interview. It's the teams and drivers' problem. Let, let's give them <laughs> the opportunity to reflect on it. Give them the opportunity to reflect and say, yeah, OK. Because, honestly, as you've said several times this mm-hmm. show, part of the debrief um, process, certainly mm-hmm. in the best teams, is uh, you've got to admit you're wrong to put it right. right. And then you've got to figure out how you're going to put it right. I see a bigger... To be honest, I see a bit of a bigger issue here that really around cams as such. And, you know, somebody who's been in motorsport all my life, mm-hmm. as, as you have, as y- you, you might be young, but you've been around it, you know, for a long time and you've been a student of it for a long time. And you, of course, have been in it since you're a nipper as well. And the, uh, so we, we, we don't want to bag our sport. Of course not. But the fact is that... Um, You've only got one ASN. You haven't got a choice of a choice of service providers here if you're operating at an international level like we are. Yes. And so we haven't got a choice of service providers. Are the board of CAMS? Is, there's nobody on it who's got top level motorsport experience. We've got Gary Connolly sitting there, who's highly credentialed, very yes. good at what he does. Mm-hmm. Yep. But he's an observer. So Gary Connolly is like Michael Massey, world standard. Yes. Uh, Etc. But he's an observer. He doesn't run cams. He's he's not even an official board member. But there's nobody on that board who's had uh, top level motorsport experience. If you look at the MSA in the UK, the CEO was 10 years with ProDrive and um, uh, BAR Honda in Formula One. Mm -hmm. David Richards, who's the chairman, has been in motorsport all his life, Mm -hmm. right? He knows the job inside out. Would, would I agree with every single thing with David over the years? No, I wouldn't agree with Ryan. But, uh, but, or, or most other people in pit lane every time. Mm. But the guy knows what he's talking about. And we haven't got that in, in Australia in yeah. CAMS. And we probably need to somewhere have a little bit of a readjustment. Mm. Um, the, the, uh, if you look at the CAMS board, there's 10 members underrepresented and females mm-hmm. on there but underrepresented also in terms of of motorsport mm-hmm. experience and the real key to it is changing that is this something that supercars have to drive well i think so i mean we we pay for cams to effectively officiate our races a great deal of money it, not a, not an insignificant amount of money by any oh. means exactly right so they have to get on the front foot and drive this and 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 look at it in, I, in every aspect, not just what happened on the weekend. I'm a strong p- proponent this, no, of that. that this, this is not a new problem. No, yeah, th- th- this yeah. happens all the time yeah, and yeah. nothing ever gets... We're, yeah. we're effectively their customer. Yeah, if, we, are if, the, we are their customer. It's like when you could only get telecom, mate, before they had <laughs> Optus or whatever. You know, <laughs> 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 sorry. Yeah. But, dude, do you reckon... Do you look at it as a bit of a cultural problem as well that's crept in here? Um, like, I know the comments that Jamie, <laughs> Jamie made in the heat of the moment as well, but... There might be some truth to that as well. Do you think it's like if your team flies economy, you fly economy, right? You eat, your team eat, eats at the track, you eat at the track. Mm-hmm. Do you think as a whole, and I'm talking about, I'm not just isolating cams to this, I'm talking supercars, cams, everyone, that if you go out, you're eating at the track, everyone eats at the track because then all the teams see that, the team representatives, the drivers, and it's a group because you are a group. And I think supercars need to be aware of this as well, not doing Instagram posts of flash restaurants and around. Oh, right, wherever they go. A big, big leader of that. Yeah, 
Do you Let's think? Oh, that's what I think. I think if uh, I'm a driver, I'm a teammate, and I'm eating at the track, or I'm flying economy. Well, but Sean, Se- Sean Seymour has, he, to be honest, he has got his um, head around that, and he mm-hmm. has um, instituted a, a far better policy around all that. Um, in in what I've seen the last couple of years, Sean's really aware of not only uh, being careful with money, but being seen. Mm. to be careful with yeah. it. So he, he's done a much better job than we've had before. You know, the Hollywood days, et cetera, hopefully a, a bit a bit left behind. But the, look, the only way, as Paul said, the only way you'll know, you know how much red wine's consumed is look at everyone's expenses accounts and see. Well, just, just said, print it out. I guarantee you there's... But the, I reckon there'd be bottles of wine on there. Yeah, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a, no. with having a bottle of wine at all. And, and, you know, Terry, very happy when everyone has a bottle of wine in Cirame. <laughs> But we're... <laughs> well, I, I don't... So this is how I see it, right? If you look at the aviation industry, it's like all yeah. the pilots are trained and the air traffic controls trained to that level. Okay, there's a bit of a difference going on here. Yeah. Our air traffic control is nowhere near the level of our pilots and operational people of the aeroplanes. It, but, but, but honestly, Tim, Tim Re- Schenken in that control, he relies on the support around him. Yes. Right? And you're only as good as your weakest link. Yeah. So it, somewhere the support, as we identified mm-hmm. with Michael Massey, was probably there, yeah. and yeah. it's not now. But if he honestly believes that statement that he said, yeah, well, that's mm-hmm. towing. That's, that's, that's but that's towing you. a cams mm-hmm. policy, which I've just referred to earlier. Yeah, so. I think that's wrong. Right. Yep. We talked about earlier about this. My comparison with Thailand with the laissez majest laws where you're not allowed to criticize mm-hmm. anyone you know that's nonsense yeah, I'm, I'm reminded of a saying from our late great friend steve brabeck yeah perception is reality yep so Rob, do, do we need something like you know you have in your team when you do pit stops over the gantry to check all the tie guys are, uh, are operating correctly and doing all the right things that they should be doing do we need some cams and and some audio in the control room just to go when these things sort of things happen, you can actually hear it and see it and then go back through it and say, OK, I can understand where we went wrong. Oh, it, it, undoubtedly. I mean, I believe that the, the, the audio or whatever for what goes on in race control exists because if you, if you imagine... From, you from had, New Zealand. But, yeah, from yeah. New Zealand, probably anywhere. But if you had a fatality at a, at a racetrack, um, you'd probably be called uh, called before an inquest or whatever mm-hmm. to show what ha- exactly happened. So I I would be um, amazed if there wasn't an audio, as I believe there is, of what happened in New Zealand um, internally in race control. And if there's if it was all you know ship shape and and yeah. uh, and nothing wrong or there was a good a good reason or something, come out and tell us because it's a bit like the parity debate. Be transparent. Mm. Be transparent. It's like if you've got a driver who turns up to a race meeting drunk. Be transparent. Mm. Why, why Don't try and hide. Why can't they be? Why can't they be released then? That's true. And that, frog that, on the grog. Well, no, but like, like from if they've got audio from. From oh, New Zealand, I, why don't they release it? So oh, it'd be if, like if the frog on the grog, mate. They're probably pushing a special report back to the FIA or something. Or no, it like, it's just be transparent. Yeah. Be transparent with what you're doing, mm-hmm. and. This, and we don't need to hear the audio or whatever. All we need to hear is, oh, guys, we could have done a, a better job. We could have executed it better. Mm-hmm. We've learned from it. Let's move on. Yeah, Instead yeah. of we're always right. right. You're, talk, you're talking about people who thought Aussie driver search was really good for Australian <laughs> motorsport and F4 was fantastic. <laughs> you're not dealing with people that actually have any commercial reality and any idea of what's going on in the sport. Yeah, well, F4 <laughs> in Australia has been an embarrassment for all of us, unfortunately, which yeah. is uh, you, you, a shame. Well, we all, we've all paid for it. Kurt, we've all paid for it. Absolutely. I mean, mm-hmm. transparency and communication are critical. And Correct. what Ronald's people just called for that for F4, mate, it just got swept under the carpet. I, I, I remember then, when it was announced, everyone was, what, was horrified. So, you, until you, Ronald's right, until you change the board and the culture at that place, you. You, you've got a regime that doesn't really but give a the, shit. The, the question is, is what Roland's just done in ten minutes over over the over a replay of the of the timing data from yeah. from that part of the race? Will that happen in the uh, in the in the towers of power to to understand firstly that there was a problem and two how would we yeah, how would Dave we do Stewart this says he's going to replay the timing loop. 
I, I hope. But, I'm going to give them yeah. the benefit of the doubt. Okay. That after this, and looking back at it, by the time we get to Bathurst, the guys will have said we could have done a better job. Mm. And I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that absolutely they will do that. The cams will do that. Mm. The officials will do that. And we can move on and collectively try and improve the mm. sport. Oh, great. Look, I, I, well, almost, I don't reckon that's I know, on their radar, mate. I know. They're, it, more, they're more it, worried it, about holding Jamie accountable than looking at their own employees that can't do their job properly. But, but we, we're not trying to smash anyone up here. I in am. Particular. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know, but look. Uh, and, it's just and wrong, mate. I, I know, but we're talking about. Tim said something to me once. I was having a g- numerous arguments that we had over my racing career. Yeah. And a lot that I. And, really? And, some decent ones too, like almost yeah. could have ended up yeah, look, looking out of some bars um, and, not, and not the ones you drink out of. Right? And, and he said to me once, we, he said, you tell me any sport where the umpires don't get it wrong at some stage. Yep. And I sort of think about it, I went, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. But... But when it usually in other sports, when it does happen, they're straight into it. There's investigation, and doesn't usually happen again, or or, or they give a, a, and, a valid reason. And look at the sport that I that I follow uh, pretty closely in uh, the Premier League and in, in, uh, football in in the UK. Um, if a if a uh, referee makes a couple of mistakes, he's he's put in the second division or first division for a couple of games. You yep. know, mm-hmm. they they have a process for dealing with that. Yeah. You can't make too many too many screw ups yeah. in in that in that world, and for sure. And what Tim is absolutely right about is you won't get it right every time. You won't. You won't. I won't. You right. won't. Yeah. The main thing is to say, oh yeah, I got that wrong. Um, we'll fix it. A- admit it. Yeah. Deal with it, and try and do a better job right. next time. Well, look, I've solved the safety car issue. All right. So I've I've saved it. Right. I've uh, I've done a little bit of design work and went around and scared around. So. Um, we just have a look at my new design, right? This is the new safety car that I've just come up with. So uh, there's no chance of anyone going past that. Uh, I think the Mustang fit underneath it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, with, the, with the lowered roll hoop, yeah, 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 yeah. It might, <laughs> might take the wing off of it anyway. <laughs> anyway but that, that'll fix Jamie's problem. I'd like to see Jamie get through that one anyway. But anyway, so... We've got to leave it there with a little bit of light-hearted humour. But um, yeah, so that's... Again, thank you guys. That was, uh, you That's know. That's a sponsor of yours, that Sinclair Ford or anything, is it right? Is that, no, it's no. not. But we will hit them up. It is now. Yeah, if they're still around. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but there'll be something in there. That's really cleared a lot, a lot up. And, and honestly, um, I know the comments on, on our social media sites have been going off their head about this. So we had to say something about it. And we had to jump on this quick because all of a sudden no one else is. We're probably going to be the first ones to actually debate this and get it out in the open. And, and we've done it. So... Appreciate your honesty with it, and uh, hopefully, hopefully this will get resolved and it won't happen again. Thanks, thanks, thanks guys. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. I, I really hope you you liked uh, these these two episodes. We've, we've covered some pretty heavy duty stuff. It's a departure from what we've done before, but as we say, we're going to bring it to you hard and fast, and we bring it to you factual as well. And these sort of guys, you won't you don't get any better than this. So. Make sure you tune in again. The racing gods, mate. The racing gods are about That's to give us a <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Cam. <laughs> See you guys. See you next worried, time. You're going to race this weekend. Do you reckon I still got a license? <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>